It is your PrisonPlanet.tv memberships that fund so much of what we do here in this operation. And then we're more than happy for the TV show after it's aired live, then be leaked out onto the web to tens of millions of people. That's our goal. Folks, we have got another obviously incredibly important broadcast as the world just gets crazier and crazier uh, by the minute. I am your host, Alex Jones, and we are going to be live here, Lord willing, for the next three hours. The news websites are infowars.com and, of course, prisonplanet.com, streaming video at prisonplanet.tv. I um, woke up at about 3 a.m. last night just gripped with conviction to warn people. And I didn't really have an epiphany or what you'd call a vision. It was more of a crystallization uh, of the technocratic system that's being established and really their entire master plan and what is being established. And so what I'm going to do here today is open the phones up in the first hour on North Korea, the Second Amendment, the state saying your children belong to them and that you're an extremist if you don't believe the state controls the children and owns the children. Uh, I want to have a discussion about the overall authoritarianism that's coming in like a flood in an attempt to overwhelm us and then ridicule us uh, so that we're off balance and basically accept uh, the destruction of our republic, the destruction of our wealth, and our journey towards slavery being completed. And I'm going to try to focus my mind uh, today because the reason I don't really get into the globalist master plan completely is that it is, it is such a large compendium of information that it is hard to describe to people the full depth of it and how the dialectics work. But I mean, a lot of it's very, very simple. There is a scientific elite that's mopping up pockets of resistance nationally, worldwide, taking over uh, countries. They have them under economic or military or both uh, siege. They want to end humanity as it's known. And they've already chosen the evolutionary curve of humanity, they believe. Uh, towards uh, an end of humanity as we know it and a new species of limited supermen that have merged with new genetic uh, manifestations uh, and the cybernetic interfaces. And they openly, I mean, it's everywhere, uh, fantasize and, 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 and popularize and engage in predictive programming to sell the idea that this is a foregone conclusion and... Uh, that some type of uh, heavenly existence, uh, utopian, anti-dystopia will manifest. But if you look at what they're really building, it is a complete and total dystopia uh, of the highest magnitude. So I'm going to attempt to break it down today. And this program is so evidenced, it, it, it is so 100% on record that it dizzies my mind that we're even having a debate about this. Uh, the establishment is moving forward with an accelerated timetable for several reasons. They're about 10 years behind in their projections, and they've looked forward that if they don't accelerate the program, uh, their operation will fail. But they have succeeded in their greatest goal of creating an artificial habitat civilization with government and corporate reservations that are breakaway civilizations several steps above us. So that's what they've got over us is that we are now in a fishbowl. 
Uh, but we can build civilizations out of their program if we realize the matrix. It is April 11th, 2013, on this Thursday edition. We've got a very important broadcast lined up. We're going to have updates from the head of Gun Owners of America, Larry Pratt, at the bottom of the next uh, hour, or at the start of the next hour, he's going to be popping in with us. Uh, then at the bottom of the next hour, uh, I will break down the most chilling information that we have ever covered here on this broadcast. And it's all publicly available. And it deals with the technocrats, the Anglo-American eugenicist elite, and their own statements, their own plans, and what they've done before. What they do when they have full control of a country. What they do when they have full control of a country. What they do when they have full control of children. Because if you want absolute proof of what their goal is, what their plan is, you don't just have to go read the books they've written admitting they plan to exterminate the majority of us once world government is fully in place and they incrementally cut the resources off while posing as the saviors during the deepening crises. It's all about crisis management strategies of tension. I have received out of the National Archives restricted Bilderberg documents. I've talked to former heads of Special Forces Command. They all know what's going on. And the plan is to destroy the family, shut off the resources, and bring in a global medical tyranny, and then if you fight back against the white-coated exterminators, Nazis used them first, Soviets used them first, then they're backed up by paramilitary death squads. And we know the exact formulae, not even reverse engineered, this is all out in the open as a mosaic of actions, white papers, and statements. I mean, they just released a bunch of WikiLeaks documents, and Kissinger's not denied them, and the government said they're real. And uh, what did Bradley Manning, who was part of releasing them, say? He said it's like the establishment is a kid with a magnifying glass burning ants. Well, that's how H.G. Wells described in his allegory War of the Worlds, which he later wrote books about, saying is what the elite's going to do to us. They are the machines. They are the Morlocks. We are the Eloi. Same allegory over and over again. Same story over and over again. Remember the Fabian Socialist, top globalist, part of the inner eugenics cult, wrote the book, The New World Order. He said... that they were going to bring in this world government and that they were then going to exterminate us. For our own good, of course. And there's a new Bilderberg group uh, report out at Infowars.com right now where the president of the Italian Supreme Court, very famous individual, has now come out and said that the government has all of the documentation and Italian intelligence has all the documentation that every time Italy tries to get out from under the EU or the globalist system, terror attacks are staged by the Bilderberg Group. Document says secretive group was involved in strategy of tension. And, and what does Kissinger say in the new WikiLeaks documents? He says, the illegal stuff we do now, the unconstitutional we have to do later. Absolutely devastating. And, and going back to H.G. Wells, he described how the establishment sees us as amoebas 
in a petri dish and they're coldly and scientifically studying us watching with a cold gaze with what they plan to do to us and they do it with the so-called water you drink with all the poisons and pharmaceuticals in it and the hydrofluorosilicic acid that's an adjuvant hyper turbocharging all the other poisons and, and, and it's in State Department Memorandum 200, it's in John P. Holdren's book, Ecoscience, it's, it's in hundreds of publications, Club of Rome, all in my film Endgame, screenshots of their newspaper that they send to members, how they're doing this to us, and it's funny to them. And I'm supposed to just sit here while they're doing this to us and think it's funny. Or go join the establishment and play the part of a mainline Republican like Rush Limbaugh or Glenn Beck. And just have a extended last meal, I guess, over the next decade or so. And just watch society rot. And I'll just sit back in a genteel way and watch my children's entire future destroyed by madmen. I'm going to explain this again. The people that run the New World Order are the people that created the Soviets and the Nazis and the Maoist. And Pol Pot, who was, again, quote, fighting the communists. They don't care as long as humanity is attacked and destroyed and butchered and defaced. These globalists compete with each other who, over who is the most vicious. And there are real torture camps by the hundreds. This has now been released by WikiLeaks. We already knew this. This had already come out. But, but it just further confirms that the Army's own report from 2007, the Tagumbu report, General Tagumbu, is a rare moment of the schizophrenic Pentagon going, this program resulted in children being raped in front of their parents with battery acid and large objects. Go read it. That's just one footnote. And the Pentagon's like, we shouldn't do this. And then they pull back with the program because there's a moment of, whoa, we're really super evil. Whoa, Dr. Mingala. And by the way, these weren't even real Al-Qaeda terrorists. They publicly work for the globalist. I have a stack of news I'm going to get to after Larry Pratt leaves us at the bottom of the next hour to just show you what the technocrats are doing. They're seeing what military will follow orders. They're seeing what contractors will follow orders. These are all tests. Because the devil mimics God. This whole world's a test for God or his people. But the devil tests his people. And if you don't believe in the devil, I, I mean, what is the good guys torturing people's kids? And then they have, I mean, I picked up a law enforcement magazine at a 7-Eleven 13 years ago, back in 99. I read it on air. And it was a whole scenario for police about do you torture a terrorist son to, to find out where the anthrax bombs are that are going to go off in New York. And the, the intelligence operative teaches the SWAT team guys, the SWAT team magazine, teaches them, yes, you do. The end justifies the means. I mean, just pure twist your mind. And cops out there all listening going, yeah, I've seen that, I've heard that. Because I see that about a third of the time, I just randomly pick up a law enforcement magazine. And just open it, it's just pure evil. Page after page of just absolute evil. Last time I picked one up a few years ago, I opened it up and it was uh, an article written uh, talking about Dallas saying, you know, if you see somebody with a get out of the UN sticker on their car, go ahead and bring them in. And police chiefs, go ahead and back your officers. Find some reason to charge them with something because these are extremists that want to kill cops. And then you go out and treat patriots like they're bad guys. They go, oh, you're a bad guy. See how you're like two fighting fish put in the same tank? And the globalists sit back going, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> Full spectrum dominance. Waylon Jennings' son, 
is going to be in studio with us, Shooter Jennings. I've never met him in person, talked to him on the phone quite a bit. He's a big fan and listener. I'm a big fan of his work. And I wouldn't lie to you if I wasn't a fan of his work. You know, I wouldn't even care about talking to him just because he's Waylon Jennings' son, one of my favorite uh, outlaw country singers, one of my favorite, period. Johnny Cash, Waylon Jennings, Chris Christopherson, Willie Nelson, the highwaymen, there they are. Uh, his music is just amazing. And uh, he wrote uh, The Summer of Rage a few years ago. It's in our film Police State 4, The Rise of FEMA, which we ought to use for bumper music. I mean, it is a five-star song. And uh, really powerful. It's about looking into his child's eyes, realizing that you can't just deny all this is happening. You've got to say no to it. The good in the world has to stand up and say no. He's going to be popping in. Uh, here in the third hour, we're going to play some of his new album premiering in here. His new tour starts, I guess, tonight um, in New Braunfels, or is it uh, town San Marcos, just north of there, you yeah. know? So he kicks his new tour and album off uh, here today. Look forward to meeting him in person. Just some good old boys, never meaning no harm. Been in trouble with the law since the day they were born. I'm just a good old boy. You know my mama loves me. <laughs> That's what it's all about, loving your children and your mama loving you. You know I'm a good old boy. You know my mama loves me. And that's what's wrong in the world. Most of these evil people came from evil families where their mama didn't love them. Well, you know what? My mama loves me, and your mama loves you. And we're going to stand up for the children. So here we are, as usual, held hostage by another crazy government that it turns out has been meeting in secret with the U.S. government. You know, the globalists are so criminal, they may have even been paying Kim Jong-un to do all of this so they can sell more weapon systems to South Korea and others. That's pretty much what uh, Dr. Steve Pachinik is saying is going on. And you're like, well, what's the proof of that? Well, ABB, headed up by Rumsfeld, the same guy that got aspartame approved and so many other horrible things, he transferred the reactors, and they said, why, are, why is the U.N. authorizing, and why is Clinton authorizing the Swiss company headed up by Rumsfeld at the time? I tell you, you know, they, they put him on the board and make him the president for a year, CEO, then they get the approval. Uh, and then he transfers the reactors to them that allow you to make the fissile material to purify the... Uh, to enrich is the proper term, the fissile material to then make atomic bombs. You know, 1945 technology. It'll still vaporize your city. And now we're sitting there where they have A-bombs that the globalists essentially gave them. And no one remembers because no one even knew at the time. No one pays attention to stuff like that. I was following it. I was first on radio and TV, 95, 96, and... Covered it on the air. I was like, why is this Swiss company, and it happened 96, 97, 98, 99, this went on for like five, six years, transferring reactors to them, and the fissile material that they could then enrich. Just like our so-called government is putting Al-Qaeda in Libya and Syria, and it's all over the news today. U.S. expected to increase aid to Syrian rebels, AP, including Al-Qaeda. Washington Post, Al-Qaeda in Iraq formerly unites with powerful Syrian militant group funded by the U.S. government and NATO. America's hired death squads and torture teams are still operating in Iraq. Over 150,000. And they're just disappearing whole families, killing people, torturing, murdering. They're just contractors now. And again, this is an army. Build me an army worthy of Mordor. Fighting Urukai. Tonight, you will feast on man flesh. I mean, they are over there doing unspeakable, hellish stuff. I mean, it's intensifying 20, 30, 40 times what Saddam did. 200 camps alone in Iraq. Giant CIA command fortresses filled with thousands sending forth the black armored vehicles to grab the families. Flying them out, black sites all over the world. 200 estimated in Iraq in these WikiLeaks documents. Hundreds in, in, in Poland and Romania 
and Ukraine and Georgia and Jordan and Israel. And now they found black sites in the U.S. And of course, while they're at it with the CIA aircraft flying drugs in, and you guessed it, little kids... Little kids, little pigs, little pigs, let me in. Not by the hair of our chinny chin chin. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down. Just total savage murder where you are seen like a steak at the supermarket by these people. I mean, you don't even enter their club unless you can slowly torture a child to death. Oh, but let's turn our guns into these people. They're nice. Oh, God. Al-Qaeda has always worked for the New World Order. Before it was called Al-Qaeda, British intelligence, Lawrence of Arabia, look it up. It's all there, but they think you're stupid. And so I've really analyzed this. I've sat back and I've said I hate Kim Jong-un. I just hate scum, hereditary dictators feeding on everyone. I feel for those people. But you can't take him out because I'm telling you, above the U.S. government, above NATO, above the chi government, there is the international crime order. I mean, they've written books about it. There's the corporate superclass that just uses governments. And they're exempt from everything. They have diplomatic immunity. They can do whatever they want. Drug dealing, sex slaves, snuff porn. The UN's constantly caught and doesn't get in trouble. This is evil because it's evil people animating government and major corporations and, and channeling their dark force through it. And then we're just here, oh, you're the authorities, do whatever you want, not resisting it. And it is now getting up on its legs, energizing, ah, preparing for a mass orgy like Hitler or Stalin or Mao. Lying down to it will let them win. Ladies and gentlemen, the head of the Italian Supreme Court, who was privy to government documents, the former head of their CIA has also gone public, says the Bilderberg Group is specifically staging terror attacks all over Europe and the world uh, to destroy national sovereignty and keep uh, national governments under the control of a private banking cartel. Uh, and he says he specifically has the documents. Uh, the former head of their CIA, who's extremely uh, famous and revered in the country, uh, has come out and, and apologized to the Italian people and said that he knew it when, when he got into intelligence a few years after it happened, but that the, the Bologna bombing and other major bombings all over Italy that killed hundreds and hundreds of citizens, well, one of them killed over 170 people, the Bologna bombing, including a bunch of children, uh, was carried out by, get ready for it, Get ready for it. U.S. Special Forces. Of course. I mean, I have a Black Ops Special Forces manual that WikiLeaks released four years ago. It's online. The, the Pentagon admits it's real and says we're going to arrest whoever released this. Well, they, they say it's Bradley Manning. And they admit it's real. And in there it says, you know, uh, in the manual, you need to go take our classified course in false flag to win over indigenous populations. And what's a false flag? I've talked to special forces about it. This is some of the stuff that was done in Vietnam. And, of course, most of these guys come back and end up committing suicide or they become preachers and repent to God. But you go down to the water and you find a little kid who's out there playing by the side of the river and you hang him. And then you leave paraphernalia of the Viet Cong there. And that's what, that's what uh, Colonel Kurtz and Apocalypse Now is all about. Where he talks about the Viet Cong doing stuff like that. They took the inoculations. And so the Viet Cong come in and chop off all the little kids' arms. And he says, these weren't crazed men. These weren't men that were doing it to be evil. They did it because they were focused. They did it because they love their families. That's not really true. You see, we go beyond Kurtz here. That's a lie, ladies and gentlemen. And of course, that story is a composite of some true events that happened. And that's not even really publicly disclosed, but I know the people involved in it. Now, that's the reality, ladies and gentlemen. And 
If you think raping somebody's kid in front of their parents to get them to tell you where the insurgents are in Iraq is good, then I'm evil. And if you think, and, and the truth is they hired a bunch of former fired federal jail guards to go run many of the prisons that have military under them who had already been caught doing stuff like this. They like to do it. You know, the reason they, and, and, and I said I'd cover this at the bottom of the next hour. I'm, I'm going to get into what they're really planning. Because I want everybody out there to really know what you're signing on to. It's gotten pretty outrageous, hasn't it, where they come out in mainstream media and say, yeah, all Catholics are with Al-Qaeda. Uh, they are extremists in Army training manuals for gun confiscation in America. That's now in the major news. The state police in Colorado have gone public and sheriffs going, we're, we're given training manuals that say prepare to confiscate Christians' guns that they're going to uprise. Well, yeah, when you try to collectivize everybody's kids after the nuke goes off and after the economy collapses and the only answer is to live in government factory dormitories like Mao collectivized in the Great Leap Forward, this is all planned. And, of course, there's going to be a civil war. People are going to not turn their guns in, police. I mean, you're scared of a few people that are sick of being pushed around? You're scared to have to pull people over now, you know, and make a little money or whatever? Do you understand what's going to happen? And by the way, I've analyzed their entire attack strategy and profile. I mean, I'm just so immersed in this. I woke up at 3 a.m. last night, not really dreaming. I woke up and couldn't go back to sleep because I just sat there in the dark for hours in the living room just with such clarity. It's just unbelievable. And I just I see the whole plan because it's all there. It's not like I'm reaching out into some crystal ball and finding this. 800-259-9231. I want to get your take. First-time callers on just everything. that The craziness of the world. 800-259-9231. Now, listen, it doesn't mean their plan has to happen. We've already held them back 10 years, so they're accelerating their timetable. Because in their own words, Brzezinski's and others, they can see the trajectory that they're getting behind, and so if they don't accelerate, they're not going to pull out. They see liberty as a gravitational pull. Just as tyranny has its own pull, the more powerful it gets, the more unstoppable. They see our momentum building and the distrust of them building enough to have an event horizon. Just as the Bongino, the Secret Service agent said, he said in his spirit, he couldn't sit there while Obama was collectivizing all these kids. He physically making, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars a year, a senior guy leading the details all over the world, rock star in the federal government, you know, uh, going right to the top. And, he, and it was that sell your soul moment and he had to quit. Arde Saveda, it's the opposite here in Austin, Texas. He's selling his soul right now. In the words of Weldon Henson last uh, night during the office talking. And man, it's sad to see that happen. It's so good to see somebody, spirit, see what's happening and just step forward and go, I'm not with this. And to hear that truth in the voice, instead to see people lying and making excuses. Listen, it's a death warrant for everybody that goes along with this, okay? You are signing on. You are going into a dark room with Beelzebub. And let me tell you, Beelzebub looks like a beautiful woman. They're in the dark, the most beautiful you've ever seen. Just come, come on, come on, come on, come on, baby. Come on, come on, come on. But it's going to get you in a stranglehold as soon as you come in there. What starts like heaven is going to end up being hell. Whatever is in your mind's eye of desire, that's how it's going to appear. Or you're competitive. You want to show people that, you know, tried to hold you back that you can go be with Biden on the stage and you can sell the lie. The soul is being forfeit. It's being sold right there. And it's going to get harder and harder to turn back. It's going to get harder and harder to say no. 800-259-9231. We'll take a few calls here in a moment. I've just got news off the charts, and we've got Larry Pratt popping in. They've killed the filibuster. Gun bill clears Senate hurdle as filibuster falls short, and if they need to stage a mass shooting to get it passed, they will. You better believe it. I mean, these are killers. And by the way, they've gotten a unified coterie of criminals up there now. And again, they're all going to jail if they don't totally take over. You see, they're committed. They're committed. 
they know all this stuff, and, and, and most of them are scared. Most of them were social climbers that, you know, ran for this and ran for that, and then became mayor, and then became a state rep, and then, and then ran for Congress, and then the Senate, and, you know, they've got a mistress and three ex-wives and four kids and all these bills, and, you know, they're up there with all, uh, and the whole thing's a bubble to keep them in a matrix as well. While the real technocrats have their minions there feeding them the political information. And if anybody gets off the reservation, then the pressure is applied. And then they back off. And then they go along with it. And by increments, the sand gets deeper. The quicksand gets deeper. So we'll get into North Korea. They're threatening to, you know, nuke again and all the rest of this garbage. Uh, we'll get into Bitcoin. Mike Adams yesterday, the day before yesterday, predicted imminent collapse and a collapse is more than 50 percent drop it did do that and uh, mike was calling earlier saying he's got more intel if he wants to pop in uh, via phone or skype i know he's out on his farm uh he's got a farm and a big factory with <laughs> organic food he's an amazing guy uh he wants to pop in at 55 after 54 after in the last segment of the next hour that'd be good if he can do that to give us his what he says next uh, on bitcoin and um of course, people can say, then, did you make it crash? No, when something's shooting up 100% in a couple days, I mean, I mean, it's, it's pretty much a no-brainer, in my opinion, to say there's going to be a crash. And I, and I predicted during the interview, I said, I bet it'll crash and then bounce back up and crash and go back up to train people to stay in it for when they finally drop the hammer. And I'm not against Bitcoin, folks. I'm against being suckered because the globalists can naked short that thing all day and don't think they won't. I'm very suspicious about it, but again, that's because I've got instincts. Um, that's because I'm bad. Being right is bad. Being male is bad. Being assertive is bad. Being a slave is good. So saith the New World Order. Now, uh, speaking of being slaves, we did this piece because about nine years ago, I saw a Penn and Teller piece that showed people saying, let's ban dihydrogen monoxide. And that's water, of course. Uh, and so we went out and, and we sent out Leanne McAdoo, uh, one of our new reporters, uh, uh, out to ask the question. And no one figured out it was water until one guy, they were packing up cameras, leaving. And, and he comes over and goes, is that dihydrogen monoxide? Is that water? And then so we just cut that guy out because we were in a hurry to get back and he didn't want to be on tape. So, so the point is, is that one person out of, I don't know, I think they talked to like 30 people. Uh, out there on the pedestrian bridge over uh, the Colorado River, over a soup of deadly dihydrogen monoxide. The way she phrased it about it's dangerous, it does these bad things, that's exactly how they phrase carbon dioxide. Because all that's coming out of these, most of these plants is carbon dioxide and water vapor. And, but they can list it because it sounds scary. As a pollutant, they can tax it or shut it down selectively. So that's why we did this, was to show how they deceive and how they manipulate. And so for radio listeners, uh, it's uh, powerful audio, but the video is up on prisonplanet.com and infowars.com for everybody to see if you're a radio listener and want to check out that report. It's even more powerful seeing it. Uh, here is the report. Uh, should we ban water to save the earth? I don't usually hand out a lot of assignments, but I said, you know what? I like this Penn and Teller piece from nine years ago. And I've actually talked to people on the street that say ban dihydrogen monoxide, which is water. So I said, I would like to see you go out on the street and recreate this. And then I said, next, I want Jakari and David Knight uh, and Darren McBreen and uh, John Bowne and other reporters to go out and say, let's ban uh, sodium chloride. Let's ban uh, carbon dioxide, which they are trying to do, which plants breathe. Because banning water is just as crazy as banning carbon dioxide. People go, well, it has a scarier sounding name. Really, dihydrogen monoxide sounds even scarier than carbon dioxide. And so they went out and she said the vast majority, uh, I mean, she talked to a lot of people, so many we can't even show them all, almost all of them. I think she said one guy came back uh, and said, wait a minute, isn't that water? So here is this report. So about 10 years ago, Penn and Teller set about to prove that some Americans can be really gullible when it comes to saving the planet. And we figured, you know, it's been about 10 years. People are more awake. They're starting to ask questions. Certainly, I couldn't get them to sign this petition to ban dihydrogen monoxide. That's right. I'm going to see if people are gullible enough to ban water. Can 
Can I get you to sign my petition? Do I have to read a lot? I'm trying to get them to ban uh, dihydrogen monoxide. It's an additive in certain junk foods. And basically, we're trying to get enough signatures to get them to ban it. Sure. Oh, OK. Awesome. Well, good luck. I mean, if you want to read, otherwise, you can just take my word for it. What's the source of the hydrogen monoxide? Where's it coming from? Uh, well, it's a, one of the major components of acid rain. It doesn't come off, like, obviously, when you go to wash your fruit. It's just everywhere now. We need it out of here. I uh, will help you out. It's now being dumped into lakes, rivers, and streams. Okay. So, of course, with our whole um, system, it then gets in the air. Yep. Thank you. It causes excessive sweating, so you might already be suffering from this chemical. DHMO is being dumped into rivers and oceans and streams and town lake. What are you doing? Dihydrogen monoxide! Hydrogen monoxide? Dihydrogen monoxide? Wow, okay. I've never heard of it. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll, I'll look it up. Okay. But I'm not going to sign it. Okay. Thank you. I look like I'm up to something, don't I? Hold on. Hold on. Come on, real quick, Mom. And I'm basically just trying to collect enough signatures to get them to put it on their docket and consider it seriously. Sure. She was on the phone. So apparently, if, you, if someone's distracted and then you get them to sign something, works too. They don't typically tell you they're poisoning you. Yeah. If I can get a thousand I was, I was signatures a I was a then. Major, so I figured oh there. really? Yeah. Wow. It's been a while, it's been a while though. <laughs> well you. then so can I get your support? Uh can I read this? Sure. <laughs> if we can collect enough signatures then they'll actually take it seriously. Okay. That way you can voice it? Exactly. Okay. Where'd you go to school? Cornell? I did. Wow. Yeah. Awesome. Symptoms include excessive urination, sweating, bloating. The Environmental Regulatory Committee should be overseeing it and sort of... Okay. Come on, people! Ten years later, under the guise of saving the planet, and you'll still sign anything. Especially if you don't have time to actually read the facts. This was a 300-page paper being passed in Congress. I mean, you'd definitely stop to read what you were signing, wouldn't you? Actually, maybe you wouldn't if you were a politician. <laughs> wow, what an incredible report. And it is so important that we get this video out to everybody because despite the fact that Penn & Teller's report was seen by millions on HBO and millions on YouTube, still people say ban dihydrogen monoxide and ban carbon dioxide and ban sodium chloride. I guess Bloomberg is trying to ban sodium chloride salt uh, in New York. Because if the control freak social engineers can get you to accept asinine things, they can get away with anything. And that video is up at Infowars.com. And again, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not trying to be so dark here, but reality is dark. We're letting evil people do incredibly horrible things publicly. Where are the apologies to yours truly? I told you the state would start saying the kids belong to them. I told you they'd try to register your guns and then confiscate them. I, I mean, because I, the, the globalists have done this all over the world, the same people. I told you they would start shutting down our power plants. What do you think NAFTA and GATT was for? Get rid of our jobs, make us dependent. And I told you the criminal elements that run our government and other Western governments created Al-Qaeda and they run them and now it's all over the news that yeah Christians are now the main terror group along with I mean it was returning veterans gun owners libertarians conservatives now it's oh and the Christians and imagine the state police in Colorado have gone public they're in these federal training seminars going prepare to mass confiscate the Christians they are the enemy I mean right there it should be running around going enemies have invaded enemies have invaded I mean, they're bad-mouthing George Washington, saying the state's going to get the kids. <laughs> it's like North Korea landed, but it's not. But the red, it doesn't look like North Koreans, though. With little idiot Kim Jong-un, it's, it's Obama. But he's just the front guy. And then you got all the useful idiots who think the government's their friend. The government was taken over. Now they're trying to mop up free speech in the states, but we're resisting. They haven't won yet, and we are striking back. All right, let's jam in some of your phone calls in this segment and the next. And Larry Pratt, we need to go ahead and start getting connected. Busy guy. 
uh, will be joining us to give us an update on the filibuster to try to block the national gun registration. That's what it is. And you got the Austin City Council guy going, don't worry, after we finish this work registering, your sign saying stop gun ban, you're going to need that sign because that's what we're going to do. <laughs> yeah, you're my slave, baby. Ooh, just like North Korea, government's got the guns and the people don't. And look at the heaven it creates. They just want the guns to be our friends, just like they took the Iraqis' guns to be their friends and have torture camps all over the place and make them plant GMO. You know, if you don't plant GMO over there, they come and kill you. That's freedom, isn't it? And our troops don't like it too much. They come back and commit suicide, but it doesn't matter. They've got all the mercenaries hired who like doing the work. That's all been leaked by WikiLeaks. Mass torture, mass death, death squads, killing whole families. It's fun. Uh, let's talk to Donald in New York. You're on the air. Welcome. Now, that's exciting, Donald. Very interesting, yeah, Donald. I'm here. Yeah. Okay. Oh, hi. Hey, uh, hey, uh, hey. I got to tell you, man, uh, I'm a fan, dude. I just became a fan. You got me awake, man. I'm awake. Well, I'm glad you're awake. Now, just don't drink the, flu the sodium fluoride out of the water, and everything will clear up. And then you can save I'm those brain sorry. cells to take some vaccines so you can really die. I'm sorry. Go ahead. The, this Melissa Harris, man, this thing, man. I watched I watched the video on it, dude. This, this lady's crazy. Does she not realize that, you know, Hitler said this to his people, you know, that the, the children don't belong to you anymore. They belong to the state. I mean, uh, people need to wake up and start seeing. I mean, oh, I yeah, you're talking about the MSNBC host who's also an educator. That means a brainwasher. And then she said, your children belong to the state. We've got to get past this private idea and that, you know, that your children are yours. And then she laughed at everyone when they got upset. She went, ah, <laughs> I'm in control. I'm sitting under the government's fat wart covered belly. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm sitting under the devil's sweaty rump. I'm powerful. I've snuggled up to the snuff film uh, producing New World Order. I've snuggled up to the black ops squads that staged the terror attacks. I'm snuggled up to it, drinking delicious milk. Go ahead. It, it's, it's insane. It's insane. I, I personally was a child of the state until I was 16, so I personally know... How many how times? How many times were you molested by the government? Plenty of times, man. I mean, educational-wise, um, religious-wise, I can't tell you how many different homes I was in with different religions that were forced upon me. Oh, know? really? But you never had pervs go after you. Wow, you were lucky. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, I, I happen to be one of the fortunate, I feel myself as one of the fortunate ones that, you know, all the bad things that happen out of life to me, I've learned from, and I'm a father of three boys. So, Good. you know, I have... I have an 18-year-old, a 13-year-old, and a 12-year-old. So despite the raised... fact they tried to break the chain of families with you, you have regenerated it and are defeating the enemy. Just surviving and having your family grow up healthy is a victory over the New World Order. And every child they can't destroy, they hate it. Every child they can't brain damage, they hate it. They're just like, okay. Sorry, go ahead. And I try, I try to educate my kids. I mean, personally, I don't think the educational system, and, and I've seen it this last year, my two youngest kids uh, are in elementary school. They're, you know, they're in sixth and seventh grade. And I've watched them implement a whole new math system that's two grades above where they are. And 85% of the students are failing in this. No, no, it's school. designed to then, no, no, it's designed, the Department of Education, to give them too hard too early so they never, never get the basics to destroy them. This is all by design. You know, the idiot MSNBC persons being defended by the Communist Party and the Socialist Party in the U.S. We have an article up on Infowars.com. You know, the lady that came out, the host, and said in the promo, uh, Harris, she said, hey, let's, uh, you know, the state's going to take over your kids. It's a good thing. Uh, she may not even be consciously evil, though she probably is, but she signed on. Everybody that signs on to big government in the system, I'm going to talk at the bottom of the hour about what you're signing on to and where this is going, just so you know. And by the way, this stuff is not my opinion, okay? I, I mean, we know in an extremely focused way exactly where this is going, not even generally, because the enemy acts like we're not even here and just admits it all. You know how frustrating that is?
Uh, we got Larry Pratt coming up with updates on the savage attacks going on. Uh, looks like they may get their gun grab passed in the Senate. Then you just, I guess, stage a mass shooting after that and get the House emotionally to vote for it so they can register you and start the persecution of gun owners. We've got some more news on that. Uh, let's go ahead, though, and talk to Dean in Virginia. You're on the uh, air, sir. Go ahead. Finally, I'm sitting in my driveway in Virginia looking up at the sky and about a dozen chemtrails, mm -hmm. two of them doing a 360 as I speak. That's an admitted government program, but everybody calls them chemtrails and never... Uh, the uh, geoengineering program, so then people still think it's just a rumor. I'm not knocking you yeah. for calling it chemtrails. It's just that it, it, it's, it, they say they don't exist, even though they do exist on record, like they say the Federal Reserve isn't private when it's private on record. My call is uh, talking about two things. The airsoft guns, I was going to talk to the gun guys yesterday, how the ATF confiscated 30 airsoft guns. My son is heavily into airsoft, and I see about 500 to 1,000 of these warriors, these like SEAL Team warriors, with their airsoft, very real replica guns that fire these plastic BBs. They said, the ATF guy said on tape that they can be converted into real guns. I think this is a ploy to get them banned too. Just like... You know, oh, regular. there's no doubt. Many cities, because there's not a lobby for BB guns, have already banned BB and pellet and other air guns. And, and so you, the people that told you about this saw a newscast four years ago uh, out of Washington State where one of the importers of these has a shop, and the ATF guy holds it up and says, you can convert this into a real 223 when it is an airsoft uh, thing that shoots plastic pellets, which is ridiculous. Uh, I mean, it's impossible. Uh, and yes, they now are raiding people that sell them, uh, saying they have real firearms. And they don't care because they can tell the public. Look, look, the average person in Congress thinks that clips or magazines are disposable. Now, my other point was how they're conditioning us with every day, 24-7, about Korea's ready to launch. It could be any minute. They're ready to launch a nuclear strike on the U.S. or Japan. That's all of a sudden, we're going to have a, whoops, an EMP over one of our national cities, L.A., Chicago, and they're going to blame it on North No, Korea. no, I mean, I woke up at 3 a.m. this morning and it all crystallized. It's not my opinion, it's a fact. The globalists, not even the U.S., the globalists, Donald Rumsfeld, gave the reactors to him in the mid-90s through 2000. There were secret meetings have now come out even in Reuters with the Pentagon a month ago before all this started. And I don't think they totally control them, but they've made a deal to give them oil and food and stuff behind the scenes and hookers or whatever Kim Jong-un wants, you know, more movie stars to come see him, burn out movie stars and basketball players, if he'll do this to sell weapons. And, uh, and it's some way to then have an excuse to attack China or to menace the Chinese, again, at a globalist level. This is a mafia uh, deal going on. And, and, and yes, just like they put the mullahs in, the CIA put the Ayatollah Khomeini in. Then they had a deal to have him grab our people, hold them, and that's all come out. The other person goes, well, I saw Argo. That's not true. That's the fight at the grassroots. Up above it, these, uh, these people work together because they all stand to gain from the crises. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, and, and so they may nuke a city sometime. Say North Korea did it, have some limited strike deal. He'll be protected. And then they'll use that to come after all of us. I mean, let me tell you, we're run by foreign banks now. We'll be right back. All right, ladies and gentlemen, again, it is Thursday, the 11th day of April 2013. We're into the second hour. I know XM joins us in the second and third hour. Larry Pratt, executive director of Gun Owners of America, joins us. He was on CNN just the other day. We're going to play this clip later if we have time. If not, it's up on Infowars.com. And CNN properly said, you know, maybe even more powerful and effective than the NRA. They fear they fear Gun Owners of America, and Gun Owners of America has forced the NRA, and Ted Nugent agreed to this, and he's a board member last time he was on, to get more hardcore. You see, they, that's why they always say, don't be radical, don't be radical. We're not radical. Everywhere the gun grabbers have gotten control, they've taken the guns. Everywhere they've gotten control, they've taken the guns. And when they register, they take them all. And criminals don't follow the laws. And they ought to be thanking gun owners for a 49% drop in crime rate since 1991 because of gun proliferation being the number one uh, issue. And that's been done in university studies by, uh, well, you name it, uh, you know, more guns, less crime by the professors that have uh, broken it down, John Lott and others. 
So all of this is happening, and they're there collectively saying it's our fault. When he was also on that CNN piece, you can read the article and see the video up at Infowars.com. Mayors against illegal guns directors said no one in California has had their guns confiscated when they're all over the place grabbing them. If you've ever been depressed, ever been on Valium, ever been to a psychologist, period, you're now mentally ill. Notice how they advertise it and say it's no big deal, and now they're going to, without adjudication, try to take your rights. This is up at Infowars.com right now. New York State Police admit wrongly confiscating guns under new laws. Obama blowing uh, smoke on cigarette tax. IRS violates Fourth Amendment. Italian Supreme Court President blames Bilderberg for terrorist attacks. They're set to release documents. Senator says universal background checks could lead to national registry. No kidding. The ATF's already been caught over and over again keeping those records. Chinese professor says 70, 80 percent chance of war with North Korea. Environmentalist signs petition to ban water. We're not joking. They're now saying it's bad. Just like carbon dioxide. Top economic advisors forecast war and unrest. That's the news at Infowars.com right now. But to give us an update on the state of the Second Amendment and the collectivist war against the Second Amendment. They've got one against the First Amendment as well. They're states' rights, Tenth Amendment. I mean, I've never seen such an, an all-out push and assault. Uh, they're putting everything behind it. Uh, gun bill clear Senate hurdle as filibuster falls short in a 68 to 31 vote. So this is razor's edge, whether it's going to pass the Senate. Then there could magically be another fast and furious mass shooting. And then they could get it passed. And Katie, bar the door. Joining us is Executive Director of Gun Owners of America, gunowners.org. Larry Pratt joining us to break this down. Larry, what is the state of this uh, war against the Second Amendment right now? Well, we're fighting it out in the, in the Senate, even as we speak. There has been a vote on a motion to proceed, meaning we'll now bring up uh, the gun control bills that Harry Reid has uh, now that we've voted to proceed. There were 16 Republicans that voted with Harry Reid, and some of them uh, were uh, kind of surprising, like Senator Burr of North Carolina. It's possible that at least some of these members were just actively deceived by Harry Reid, who promised them one kind of an agenda for the consideration of this legislation, and he's got it in another uh, mode. I'm trying not to get people lost in the weeds. Uh, of, in fact, I barely understand it myself. We've got a, an attorney that's uh, previously worked on the Hill. For so it's just like Obamacare. It lets them do whatever they want. Um, they got their way, and then the Republicans will be able to vote on stuff that they want after the damage has already been done on Senator Toomey's bill. Senator Toomey went and made a deal with Chuck Schumer. Oh. And any time you make a deal with Senator Schumer, that can't turn out well. And so that's where we are. We're now taking that up, and the, the ability to amend with anything decent to change it, uh, whatnot, that's that's not there because Reed set it up. He set the table, so that's the only thing available for eating. And uh, it's it, the, the Republicans uh, uh, fell for, um, uh, well, they, maybe some of them wanted to believe that it would be an open process. Well, it's not. Uh, guess what? Harry Reid doing it his own way, guys, and you're going to get... And you predicted, you thing. predicted a month ago, whenever Harry Reid was acting like he wouldn't go along with this, that it was all playing possum. They always do this baiting and switching so that we can't build up political opposition. They always go, I guess you won. I guess we're not going to get it. And then the, the, the Republicans, obviously, the real power structure wants to be able to take stuff out of our bank accounts like Cyprus and Europe. They want our guns. This is the global policy. And so a lot of Republicans are being financed by these interests to go along with this traitorous activity. But, but Larry Pratt, here's my question to you. 
Uh, what can we do to try to stop this, A, and B? Do you agree we've got to get on offense? We've got to, quote, be radical. You know, they say don't be radical because it's not radical to say, hey, we've made the crime rate go down. How dare you collectively say gun owners are responsible for 20 dead kids? And if we don't do what Obama says, uh, registering gun owners and all this garbage and shutting down gun shows and private sales that, that oh, we, we're letting the families down. I mean, this is so transparent. Instead of running from this, we need to point out how they're using these dead children and go on the offense. The, um, uh, the fact of the matter is that all of these mass murders that have occurred in our country over the last 20 years, with one exception, have occurred in gun-free zones. Many of them schools, uh, but not all. Some of them were in uh, places open to the public but posted no guns. Uh, there was a mall in Utah. Uh, in a Utah school, you can carry concealed, but in this stupid mall, I think it was called Trolley Square, uh, you couldn't. And happily, there was a police officer carrying concealed off-duty, uh, but still five or six people were murdered uh, before he could get there. And what they don't uh, uh, want to talk about, and it barely made the news, three days before the Newtown tragedy, tragedy occurred, in a Clackamas, Oregon mall, which was posted no guns, a dirt bag went in and started shooting, killed two people, wounded one. Happily, his gun jammed. And while he's fiddling with that, a good guy with a gun who also had ignored the sign uh, went running to the sound of the shots. And just as the dirt bag was freeing his gun, saw the good guy with the gun, took a few steps in another direction, and boom, ended the, uh, the whole ugly scene by committing suicide. The police got there several minutes later, which is, uh, frankly, folks, that's typical. Sure, they, thank they, God, they're, they're thank, God that, thank God that gun owners keep stopping mass shootings. Uh, my question to you is, how do we defeat this? What will happen in the House now? I mean, I know it hasn't passed the Senate. It's just gotten out of committee. What do we do to shoot this down? Uh, I mean, I mean, they're doubling down. It looks like, to me, it's backfiring politically, but they don't care. Is this the greatest assault you've ever seen? This is a very dangerous measure because... This completes the effort to have a national gun registry. They're not calling it that, but when they do the background check, they're telling dealers that if the dealer doesn't want to spend hours, many times, waiting on the phone for a clearance, he can use the Internet, which they're increasingly doing. So as most of the background checks are done by Internet, they get a little notice the first time they do it saying that, all the data supplied over this portal is going to be the property of the U.S. government. There's your gun registry. I bought a 50 caliber rifle last year at a large gun store here in Austin, and there it all was on a computer and said that. The ATF had it all, the questionnaire, everything, the gun, and, and they've been caught. You were on CNN, and they said, We've, we don't keep anything. They've been caught over and over again uh, saving all the data. Exactly. And they've even been seen by many, many of our members, and I'll bet some of your listeners have seen in stores where ATF is in there taking down all the information. Some cases they make copies, which is actually illegal, but then, hey, wink, wink, we're not making a copy if we sit here and by hand enter it into our computer. And wink, wink, we ship some guns to Mexico to blame the Second Amendment. Wink, wink, we're terrorists. Isn't that... Uh, over the top for chutzpah, the very government that's going to check on whether or not we're worthy of buying a gun, haven't committed any crime, we're not in jail, they are the ones that have killed, by their own admission at least, well, they've been complicit in the murder of some 400 Mexicans, a couple of our federal agents. And then they turn around and say, but, hey, Larry Pratt, you want to buy a gun, we're going to have to check you out, bud. Uh, we can't be too careful. <laughs> when everybody knows criminals don't follow the law. So what happens next in the Senate? And, and, I mean, give us the legislative process. How do we shoot this down? Well, first of all, as you and I speak, we're sending a communication to the Senate saying, guys, Harry Reid pulled the wool over your eyes. He didn't play straight. Um, so there were people saying, well, they were going to vote uh, for the motion to proceed, and then they would vote 
uh, for various amendments that Harry Reid said would be possible at that time. It won't be possible. It's only going to be Harry Reid's agenda that you can vote on. And so, guys, get with it. Uh, get back in, in uh, where you need to be and vote against this stuff. We can still stop this. Uh, it, it can be done, but they need in the Senate, they need to hear from the folks back home. Uh, we'll have the names of the defecting Republicans up fairly soon. There were even a couple of Democrats from Republican states, uh, maybe uh, two or two to four of them that voted right. It wasn't enough to compensate for the hemorrhage. 16 Republicans. Oh, yeah. Listen, all the favors are being called in. The stops are being pulled out. They're going for this because they want to use Homeland Security to persecute gun owners. New York and California are the model. This is a persecution program. When I did this the first time in 94, it was the one group I had to go speak to and make sure they were satisfied with what we were doing were hunters. There's a whole new sort of group of individuals now who I don't know what the numbers are that never hunt at all. But they own guns for one of two reasons, self-protection or they just like the feel of that AR-15 at the range. They like the way it feels. They, they, they just, you know, it, it's like driving a Ferrari, you know, I mean, it's like, it, it's, right. it's, and so I, my impression is there's not the same sort of cultural norm about gun ownership with a lot of people who are buying guns. All right. The truth is, we know globalists have taken over America. We know foreign corporations are giving money to anti-gun groups in a seditious action to overtake us politically. Larry, isn't this really about a takeover with the government buying two billion bullets and armored vehicles and a Fox News reporting that they're teaching state police that Christians are terrorist, period? I mean, this is really getting so bizarre, I can't even believe it. Well, when the government is referring to the population or a substantial part of the population, as the enemy. And that's what Janet Napolitano, the head of the, the Department of Homeland Insecurity, has called people who are pro-life, pro-Second Amendment, pro-Constitution, pro-property rights, uh, you name it, anybody who's kind of a traditional American, uh, they're the enemy for this administration. And they don't hesitate to call uh, any of us that. And then when they buy... Uh, not armor-piercing ammunition, not not uh, uh, wad-cutter ammunition that might be suitable for target practice, but they buy enough ammunition to shoot each one of us five times, a hundred million a year and counting. Uh, then when you talk about the the fear that has been instilled in Americans by the way the president talks, uh, I keep hearing stories of shipments of ammunition coming to a store on a truck, people find out when that truck is due, because many stores have, I guess, regular deliveries. Anyway, they find out when that truck's coming, and even if it's 6 in the morning, there'll be people out there in the parking lot with their hand trucks, and the money will be exchanged on the spot. The, the, the product never gets into the store. And with my own eyes, I've seen, I was in a, a, a large sporting goods store in Tulsa a couple of weeks ago, I guess. And except for some used firearms on the wall, nothing on the ship. Well, I've talked to shelf. major distributors. Uh, by the end of this month, most places will be completely sold out. All the shops in Austin are, rash, are, are, are rationed down to one box yeah, uh, of ammo. Also a frequent, uh, that, that's now happening. I think they've decided that they can't let the ammunition go to uh, 10 customers in the parking lot at 6 in the morning. So, uh, yeah. And it's nice of them to at least ration it out. I mean, at least you can get a box. Yeah, I, 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 I mean, here's the deal. The, the so-called liberals are authoritarians. They call themselves liberals. They're not. Thomas Jefferson was a, a liberal. They're not. And they really have dreams. This is like Che Guevara or Mao Zedong, and they quote Mao Zedong taking over. And, hey, guys, it's not like you're breaking into our house and we don't know you're coming. Okay, back off now, crazies. Now, uh, briefly, legislatively, how do we kill this? I and mean, What happens between, let's say it passed the Senate? What happens with the House? L legislatively. Well, it's not finished in the Senate, and I think people uh, can help. 
by pouring out an outrage. And we'll have the names of the 16 Republicans up on our site pretty soon, and we'll be sending it out to people who are on our email list. So if folks go to gunowners.org, they can get signed up for that. That's a freebie. Then you'll know who is who. We'll have alerts that carry email in them so that you can send it to the appropriate member of Congress, and that will help deliver the message. They realize that way we're watching, and if they really don't want to come back to Congress, if they think they're going to be paid off uh, royally for selling us out on this issue, fine, go ahead and keep voting anti-Second Amendment. I'm not going to obey this law if it becomes law. I'll tell you that right now. I'm telling your huge audience. I will not obey this unconstitutional law. They are sitting in the Senate as if they were a constitutional convention. They are infringing on the Second Amendment. They are changing the Second Amendment. And I'm not going to go along with it. And I don't think a lot of Americans are going to go along with it. But it's not over in the Senate yet. There's going to be several more votes. Still time to call. Uh, probably best to call them right now. Uh, but do sign up for those email because this is going to keep it. This may go into next week in the Senate. Can't be sure. Absolutely. We see Obama rallying his idiots saying, help me call, get involved. We got to get this done. They are organizing around this to demonize all gun owners. I want to ask you what you think is going to happen if this passes and gets implemented, what the fallback position is uh, in our next uh, line of defense against the enemy. Larry Pratt, uh, in closing, my friend, thanks for the time today. Gunowners.org. Uh, this is the real deal. Uh, what is going to happen? I mean, we see them in New York arresting veterans for over 10 round mags. We see them doing gun confiscations all over the country outside of law uh, to veterans who they claim might have had PTSD 20 years ago. Uh, we see a kid says, I I we ought to squirt that other kid with a water gun. And they go and take the dad's guns and say, you'll get them back when your son moves out in eight years, when he's 18. No judge, no jury. The state police are even, you were telling me this privately, but it's an article up at Infowars.com separately. They're saying, hey, we're being ordered to do stuff that isn't even in this law. But it doesn't matter. It, so, so the police are even saying, we don't want to do this. This shows how we've got a bunch of Marxists running this country financed by a bunch of offshore banks. What do we do, Larry? I think we got to call them for what they are, criminals. It's certainly not legal to violate the Constitution and to to talk about setting up a gun registry, which is what the background check is. Don't let them tell you anything else. This is an, a, a gun registry. The Department of Justice, as I said earlier, has told dealers, use the Internet to do a background check. We own that data. So... This has got to be stopped because they've already got a fair number of us on record. You and I bought guns at stores, so we're already there in that database. Uh, not that uh, the two of us are uh, likely to, oh, no, the Pratt would never have any guns. So we, <laughs> But uh, there are a lot of people that otherwise wouldn't be known to the government, and that's how they are now going to be known. We saw them confiscate guns after Katrina. Please don't think that, oh, my government wouldn't do that. It, they already have done that. And so this, that's why this battle is so crucial and why supporting something like Steve Stockman's bill, he's the representative from outside of Houston, uh, his bill would take away the gun-free zone gun ban. Uh, that's the, uh, the thing that has been the common element in our mass murders over the last 20 years. It's about time, at least in the schools, we get rid of these laws so that teachers, principals, janitors uh, have the capability of having a concealed carry uh, firearm with them to have an element of surprise to shoot back and to make it so it's no longer likely that I'm going to kill more people than the last guy did in this school. Larry... Here's my issue. You've been able to stop with Gun Owners of America a lot of legislation when the NRA was sold out, you know, a decade ago. They've gotten a little bit better because of pressure and your pressure. And that's a good thing. As Ron Paul said, you're the only non-compromised gun lobby in Washington. There's a lot of other great state groups and others. But, I mean, you guys are the ones that are really scientifically on it historically. 
But see, they're over the top. They're taking over. They're saying we're terrorists. They're saying we're horrible. They're saying we're culpable for dead kids. They're doing all this while butchering the rest of the Bill of Rights. They're going for it all. And I think we have a tendency to hold back because of this idea that, oh, it's mainstream, you know, to be genteel about this and, and, and to not go all the way. But there's no way to not call it what it is. And they are a pack of lying criminals that want to disarm us to enslave us. We have a map we'll put on the TV screen for listeners. I'll have this posted on Infowars.com. FBI statistics for gun violence. And then it says 2012 voting pattern. And the crime is all in the Democratic blue areas. I mean, if they are criminals. They are a criminal culture. I'm not even a Republican. They're the Democrat light. My point is, look at the Akron findings. Uh, where they go into every other acre and they're like, yeah, we want sex slave children. Uh, you want to make some cash? I mean, it, it, it's just uh, these people are gangs of lawless lunatics with moron camp followers on welfare behind them. And they mean to have a war. They're training for war with us. There should be a congressional hearing over Obama's new uh, army manual. Guys, put up army manual gun confiscation. In it, it talks about getting our social security numbers, taking our guns, putting us in FEMA centers. This is, but it sounds so radical when it's the new army manual that's public. This isn't even classified. I mean, this is red alert, run down the street with your hair on fire, like Paul Revere saying, the new world order redcoats are here. They ain't coming. Fast and furious already took place and it only stopped when to the government's surprise we managed to find out about what they were doing over 400 dead mexicans that we know of so far uh connected with those guns and uh, a couple of our federal agents murdered by people using fast and furious guns and it just drives me crazy to think that this is the government that thinks it has the moral authority to decide whether you and I should be able to buy a gun. I'm sorry. I, I don't think there should be a background check. What good is it? No, the, the criminals is, is giving guns to the enemy. What anyway? do you think of Snoop Dogg with all of his drug uh, arrest and convictions and, 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 and murder arrest and then you know, plea bargains and, and, and all the gun arrest saying we need to all turn our guns in? I mean, I, I, guaranteed Snoop isn't going to turn in his illegal guns. By the way, it's internment and resettlement operations FM 3-3940. Folks, read it and weep, February 2010. I mean, I I'm just sick of these people in my face, criminals saying, turn my gun in. You first, criminal. Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think we might ought to ask the government to start turning in their guns because they don't put them to very good use. Uh, this is just if and if they really think that guns are the problem, if that's what Mayor Bloomberg, for example, thinks is the problem and you and I need to be disarmed, Mayor I'll give some credence to your argument, and I'll consider it when I see you tell the bodyguards that you've got to go on home. You're not going to need them anymore. Uh, no more armed men around you. No sirree, because we know that guns only make it likely that there's going to be more violence. Absolutely. In closing, Larry Pratt, I asked the question for the break and digressed after we came back. What do you think is going to happen if they succeed and clearly their plan is to then persecute gun owners and, and, and nickel and dimes and, and uh, misapply gun statutes like the ATF does where a guy's M AR-15 M4 misfires and shoots three bullets in front of everybody. It's a military veteran, no criminal record, and they throw him in prison. I, I, mean, I mean, clearly they want to persecute us. Uh, as a litmus test, they hate our guts. Being criminals, you have that criminal instinct to go after good men. Wh I mean, what's going to happen? Because it's, it's not just me. A lot of others are saying right. this is going to become a civil war. This can only happen if the Republicans let it happen. And if they think they're going to be immune from consequences at the polls, I think they're making a very serious political mistake. There's a more cons uh, conservative constituency voting in this off year coming up. The drones tend to come out more for the presidential election, but the producers and the conservative, uh, more conservative people are going to be voting. There's going to be primaries, and believe me, we're going to be looking for credible primary opponents to each and every one of these Republicans that votes wrong, that votes to 
to basically do away with the Second Amendment and to infringe away. This is serious stuff, and well, Larry, it will have consequences. Before this goes to blows, like Bunker Hill, that's what they're looking for, I'm going to use every means necessary that's nonviolent. And, and if that means picketing, if that means bullhorning, if that means a politician that's anti-gun, if I can sue them for something else they're doing wrong. I mean, I'm pulling out the stops, okay? You I'm, you. I, I mean, I mean, I, I personally... I'm going to start, you know, frequenting bars that's, that that that, that anti-gun city council people stay at, and I'm going to catch them with a hooker. I mean, I mean, I'm I'm running, I'm running counterterrorism against them. I'm turning it loose. It's time to get do what the Veritas Project does or Project Veritas. It, I mean, because let me tell you, I know these people. All of them are crooks. I'm telling you, 99% of these globalists are crooks. And if we just start get them on anything we can, Larry. It, I mean, this is all-out war, is it not? Uh, if they're declaring it, so they shouldn't be surprised if it actually happens. I guess they figure that they can, they can get. They've been used to getting away with a lot of stuff, and uh, I think that's going to be coming to an end now. I think I've never seen people this upset this long. Uh, not even after a Columbine when they were in our face pretty bad. Well, they're not upset. They they're probably staging it all. They stage fast and furious. Well, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, it, it's going to be uh, uh, serious stuff. So I think uh, uh, they'd they better consider what they're doing. Uh, they, I know that the servers on Capitol Hill have been uh, breaking down. There's been so much uh, contact coming in from us rubes, and they disregard that at their peril. Well, what do you make of all the FBI and Secret Service and federal marshals? Feds have been speaking out and quitting like Bongino and so many others. They're really getting, wow, bad guys are really running the federal government. I mean, this is really bad. And what uh, there's a flip side to that, too. Those that are in, like the Bonginos of the world, these are guys that are highly trained. And if they're not going along with the program, they're your worst enemy, Mr. Administration. I, uh, history is repeating itself. We are we have front row seats to trying to stop basically Hitler in 1935 or so after he's already in. And again... I know Romney was a globalist. Romney basically rolled over. It was all pretty much staged. But I got to tell you, I, I mean, uh, 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 you know, I've been critical of all these groups. But I'm telling you, Obama is so much worse than I even thought. And, and, and uh, I mean, the fact that they're just going for it and yes. shutting our power plants down. And, I mean, they're trying to – it's not rhetoric. They're trying to bring America down to collectivize us like Mao Zedong did in China. I mean, these – and they all quote Mao Zedong. They say our kids belong to them. I mean, they're flaming authoritarian dirtbags. They're, they're tearing down dams uh, in the West. They want to rewild the country, uh, kind of like uh, Romania, move us all into large – urban centers where we live stacked up in high They're rise. admitted communists. God help us. Larry Pratt, Gunners org. Thank you for always coming on to give us updates. I know you're a very busy man. You know, uh, have a quick 10-minute lunch for your next... Uh, I'm going to let you go so you can eat something. <laughs> Great and to be with you, Alex. And, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. We'll talk to you. Folks, go to Gun Owners, uh, sign up, become a member, uh, you know, uh, get the free alerts. We'll talk to you soon, Larry. Thanks again. Uh, I mean, I'm going to be honest with you, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, this is just freaking me out. Because all I do is watch these liars lie and, and use dead kids and everything else when they all know full well. And then, I will, if you're not a TV viewer, we just showed the map of everywhere that the socialists are in control in America, and that's where the crime rate is two, three, four, five times. And then they spin it going, well, we do need to take all the guns in the urban areas. That's where the crime is. That's because that's where you've got all the people from countries that never had a Second Amendment who were domesticated. And, and roll over to crime. And that's where you've got the corrupt police forces. And I mean, that, that's where it is. I mean, Mexico has the highest crime rate in the world. And notice everywhere on the Mexico-U.S. border has the highest crime rate. If you go uh, pull up the numbers, uh, just type in FBI statistics for gun violence. Uh, actually, put the URL up on screen for TV viewers so I can give that to them. Or ask Kurt Nemo and Adon Salazar to point, post that. If you wanted to fix Mexico... At first, it'd be like, you know, getting over a bad flu, there'd be a high fever. You would arm everybody in Mexico, get rid of all gun laws, and that's all. Th th there's a few dozen cities that have had their crime rates drop because citizens finally got guns, probably illegally from the U.S. and Mexico, and they have vigilante squads, and the crime rates have imploded. The criminals only come in when they know they're not going to be opposed. That's government criminals and others.
They've got all these Mormon communities down in Mexico uh, where they just have guns illegally. And uh, they've told the police and they've told the military and they've told the cartels the same thing. We're ready for war. Leave us alone. Don't come in. And th th they've been in control of those areas for a few years. Crime rate has just disappeared. And because they have, you know, the, the men like, you know, well, it's your night to stay up all night up there at the at the sharp shooting positions with the Barrett 50 Cal and the night vision. I mean, I mean, you got four or five watchmen in a town of thousands of people and the criminals stop showing up because they know there's somebody there with a gun on them. I mean, this is not rocket science, ladies and gentlemen. OK, they've taken all the guns in Mexico from the people hundreds of years ago. And now you, I mean, it's just amazing. It is amazing. And I said I'd get into the globalist master plan. And I even recorded some notes this morning, uh, points I wanted to make in the middle of the night and, and, and all of it. And I covered some of it in the first hour. I'll have to do it. I'll have to do it uh, in overdrive today uh, after Shooter Jennings leaves. Uh, or I'll have to do it tomorrow on the air. It, it, and I don't procrastinate covering this. It's just the magnitude is so great that I just, I need to do a special report or something. And, and, and again, I just want to ask listeners, pray for this show, because the globalists are radical in their attack because they know that's how they take over. We have to, quote, be radical in our counter response. It's not radical. You see, they lie to you. Normal response they call radical. They go, don't be like Alex Jones. That's discrediting. And then people are so mindless, they go, oh, I better be soft-spoken and say, nah, maybe you shouldn't take our guns. You know, gun have you seen the statistics? Guns lower the crime rate. Shut up, baby killer. You killed the kids at Newtown when they're the ones that want to kill babies up to age three. They're the ones trying to abort as many babies as they can. They're a death cult. They're sick freaks. They're scum. They're trash. They're garbage. And every day I think about how I've got to risk my life. Believe me, I am. And I, my family and everything. Because I, we cannot let them take over. And again, it's not because any of us that are fighting tyranny are heroes or anything. Folks, it's because it's in our gut. Yeah, we actually have an FBI graphic you guys can even show that's in the computer that goes through it and breaks it down and shows the numbers 49% uh, drop. By the way, the crew does a great job. I, I get so focused on fighting the new world order. I'm like, get that document, get this document. And I think over the years, not my crew now, but some people have thought I'm like mad at them because I'm so craved. I'm craved, not craven. And I just, I mean, I just, I'm trying to stop Lenin before he takes power. I mean, I, I mean, or Lenin's in charge, but he hasn't secured the whole country yet. You know, that, that, it took him a decade. I mean. Everybody knows I'm a big Waylon Jennings fan, and I'm also a big fan of his son, Shooter Jennings, who I've never met in person, talked to on the phone quite a bit. And, uh, of course, a lot of his music's been used in a film like Police State 4, The Rise of FEMA. But, I mean, to meet him in person, it's like he looks even a lot more like his dad in person than he does even in his photographs. <laughs> it's like, it's, just, it's amazing. I, I don't get Star Trek over just regular, you know, like anybody who's a celebrity. I like people I admire. I can't tell you how many mornings we've cooked breakfast with our kids or back when I was a kid listening to Waylon Jennings and people. I mean, I just love Waylon Jennings. So uh, Shooter Jennings is here coming in studio at the five after break in the next hour to talk about fighting the New World Order. And he's kicking his nationwide tour off right here today. Uh, he's going to be uh, outside Austin playing tonight. Okay, let's um, go to the man who was on with us Tuesday and said he predicts an imminent Bitcoin crash, and it went from 260 something down to 100 uh, in just an hour, just as he predicted. And I, and I added the prediction that it would bounce back up, which it did partially. Uh, so joining us uh, via Skype just for uh, this segment, and the next is Mike Adams from his farm. Uh, from his extremist compound. Uh, Mike Adams, I mean, you called it. Some are saying that we actually caused it. I say Boulder Dash. Uh, hi, Alex. Thanks for having me on. There's no way that we caused this. And, and I mean, even if we did, then that would mean the currency is so weak that it was a, it's a joke to begin with. So we couldn't have caused it just by, by predicting a crash would happen at some future date. But it is true that on your show, you and I, predicted, we called it 100% accurate that a disastrous crash was coming. It happened less than 24 hours later, crashing from 266 down to 105. But the real story here is that I believe this was an attack by central bankers. I believe, this is my personal belief. Well, you predicted that too on the air. Go, yeah. 
Yes, I did. Yes, I did. It unfolded exactly as we talked about. The, there is a user out there called Bitcoin Billionaire who dumped Bitcoins onto the market. I believe this was a probe attack by the central bankers to determine what's called the buoyancy, the resilience of the Bitcoin price support by dumping a predetermined amount into the, the market and watching how much it crashes. They can then calculate the amount needed to crash it down to any desired target level. So I believe this was a central banker probe attack that could be followed by a disastrous crash, which could be accomplished with less than $1 million in capital. That's how vulnerable Bitcoin is to market manipulations. The other important point here, Alex, is that the volatility of Bitcoin now proves that no large merchant will ever accept this currency. So Bitcoin has failed as an experiment. I'm sad to say that. I wanted it to work. But I have to admit, it has failed in terms of a usable currency that large-scale merchants like Amazon.com would uh, theoretically accept. They won't touch it now because the, the one-day volatility is now over 50%, even 60%, meaning that merchants can't trust it as a currency. That means that Bitcoin's only use, real, real use, is to buy and sell Bitcoins, which means it's a speculative bubble. And it means that those people who are now pushing and hyping Bitcoins are really, in my opinion, engaged in what can only be called the Bitcoin cult, Alex. This, this, it doesn't make rational sense anymore. You heard anymore. it here first. The Bitcoin, well, it, it was cultish. I've been out on the street like six months ago. I'm like, you've got to cover this. It's the greatest thing ever. It will bring them down. And I'm like, but they'll just short. I mean, I mean, they're suppressing gold while they hoard it and buy it. Uh, yeah. People say, well, that's a gold cult. No, the elite are the ones buying that. And But, I mean, I, again, I like the idea of this type of free currency. The problem is whatever's big and whatever comes out first, the enemy is going to try to blow it up. That's the basic it's, warning. It's super easy for the central banks to manipulate it, to crash it, to discredit it. And the main Bitcoin exchange has now frozen all transactions for 12 hours. It's a Bitcoin bank holiday, Alex. A Bitcoin bank holiday. But you're bad because you're right. Bad Mike Adams. Bad, bad, bad. Start getting it wrong all the time. We'll give you an MSNBC show or a CNBC show to talk to nobody. All right, right outside that door is Shooter Jennings' amazing new album out. I'm telling you, he is just phenomenal. Uh, certainly a chip off the old block. Uh, and we're going to be talking to him in studio. I'll also give you the latest updates that are up at DrudgeReport.com when we come back to the next segment. I mean, Biden has thanked MSNBC for helping destroy the Second Amendment. Senators are thanking CNN. I mean, they are just a pack of scum. Uh, I gotta love that name, Shooter. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's go back to Mike Adams. Mike, again, uh, you, I've been not critical of Bitcoin. I like the idea, just the whole way it's been put out there like a cult. My gut told me, don't be involved in it. Uh, and uh, now that's happened, but it's like I said, 2012, nothing was going to happen. And, and of course, that's not a hard call to make, but I'm still bad because I said nothing was going to happen with it. Uh, so, so what do you predict now with Bitcoin in closing? And thanks for joining us on short notice. What do you predict now is going to happen? And then how do we then get other real alternate digital currencies that we do need? Well, first of all, this reinforces the importance of having physical gold. So the gold bugs are right. You, the gold can't evaporate overnight if you have it in your possession. So number one, this is very pro-gold. Secondly, I am a proponent of the idea of cryptocurrencies, peer-to-peer -peer decentralized currencies. Bitcoin, I'm calling it a failed experiment at this point, but it's not the end of uh, virtual currencies. I think there are going to be more attempts, more, you know, Bitcoin 2.0, other things that will be attempted and may be a lot more successful. And I hope they are, by the way. I think the central banks need competition. But right now, at this point, I have warned everybody that Bitcoin currently is a, a zero-sum game, almost, almost a, a scheme at this point, because for someone to win at Bitcoin, someone else has to lose. Everybody can't win altogether. So... If you think that you're smarter than everyone else who's buying Bitcoins, then by all means, go ahead and risk your life savings at it. But chances are you're not. And what we're really seeing with Bitcoin is that this younger generation hasn't learned the lessons of the dot-com bubble, which did crash and did burst and did lose 99% of many people's entire life savings. This younger generation didn't live through that, and they haven't seen it, and they think they've discovered some new galactic 
you know, loophole through which everybody sure. can, can become wealthy. And I mean, one reason the Chinese are investing in this so much is that they, they don't invest in it because they're gullible. The general public, that's a big thing in China, is to ride bubbles. They've yes. got one for an herb right now that supposedly can, you know, help you with swine flu or something. Uh, so, I mean, you know, a lot of this was China pumping into it uh, as well. I agree with you on that front. Now, are you declaring that it's going to be dead soon, pretty much, or are you saying it's now just going to be a pure uh, casino? It is already a pure casino at this point. Until it comes back to traditional valuations, which, which I would say would be something well under $10 a Bitcoin, then I would warn people away from it. Now, I know there are a lot of people talking up Bitcoin. Most of those people have Bitcoins, and they have everything at stake. The Bitcoin exchange makes money off transactions, so they want to spin everything as good news. They call yesterday's crash a, that they're a victim of their own success. They call it a success that it crashed. I call that a, a loss of a billion dollars in valuation. So people, put your money where it really counts, which would be some gold, some farmland, maybe food production technologies, Fire maybe arms. some storable foods, firearms, ammo. That can't disappear skills, overnight. Skills. Absolutely. Be smart, people. Don't be suckered into the latest bubble. Well, look, uh, I think overall it's a good idea. I've been very suspicious of the whole nebulous nature of it from the beginning. Uh, and uh, we'll see what happens. So far, you've been dead on, and uh, we'll see what happens. But, I mean, as for gold, it, they, they are manipulating it on purpose now. Yes. And, and, and over 12 years, it only goes up. We've been proven right long term. So yes. we'll see if we're proven right on this long term as well. Naturalnews.com is where you find more of Mike Adams' great work, and he graciously lets us repost it at Infowars.com. Mike, thank you so much. Thank you, Alex. Ladies and gentlemen, Shooter Jennings, straight ahead on the other side of this break and an update on the gun grabbing. Well, the album's out and it is climbing up the charts and he's kicking off his new tour here uh, in Central Texas tonight in San Marcos. Shooter Jennings, uh, whose music is in a police state uh, for the rise of FEMA, uh, came out a few years ago, uh, which I've got to say, as I said earlier, I mean, how many stars are in music? Five stars? 20 stars. I mean, it is as good as it gets. But what do you expect? He's a chip off the old block. Waylon Jennings' son uh, here in studio with us. First time I've had a chance to uh, actually meet him in person, talk to him on the phone and on the air uh, quite a few times before. He also collaborated with uh, Stephen King, of all people, uh, also on some of the intros on the last album. The new album uh, is out, and it's available on iTunes and everywhere else. Uh, it's uh, Great Country, uh, The Other Life, available right now. We're going to be playing some clips of that, and we're going to talk about politics and the world. He's sitting right there. We're going to him here in just a moment. But the big fight on the Second Amendment, uh, give it up. Uh, Biden says it's time to get rid of the Second Amendment. Filibuster fails. Gun bill clears Senate hurdle for national registration and the persecution of gun owners. As our city councilman said, first we're going to register and then we're going to confiscate your guns right here in Austin. Democratic Senator thanks CNN for its support in gun debate. Biden thanks MSNBC. Uh, and Senator says background checks could allow Holder to create gun registry. They already do, folks. They've been caught. Highway Patrol gives Fed's entire list of Missouri concealed weapon permit holders. A lot of the media likes to publicize those, like Hitler would publish the names of Jews in the newspaper so people could target them. Uh, this is the persecution of gun owners. Senator Cruz says Obama taking uh, advantage of the dead kids at Newtown. That's all up at Drudge Report. Dot com that's the best at having the latest breaking news. We have deep analysis and videos up at prisonplanet.com and infowars.com. North Korea hasn't launched their missiles yet. Uh, as another government holds us hostage, you know, give us more money, world, or we'll blow up Japan, blow up South Korea, blow up the U.S. We'll, uh, targeting Austin. Thank God most experts agree uh, his missiles can't reach uh, Austin, but they can reach the West Coast if they were lucky to not blow up on the launch pad. Uh, and they could certainly hit Japan or South Korea. That's just the, the capital of South Korea, Seoul, 30 miles away from the missile emplacements. Uh, so that's just some of the news uh, out there today. Uh, and we'll also try to jam in some phone calls for Shooter coming up towards the end of the hour. Shooter, man, what a crazy world. Two years ago, you put out your last hit album, and it just did the whole thing talking about the tyranny in the world and the big changes that were coming. And now it's happened, and, and now you've got another album out. It's great to have you here with us. Man, it's great to be here. I really appreciate you uh, letting me on the air, you know. I think I've said to myself I'm not going to really be doing many more interviews, but... 
being on this show is is really uh, I've been looking forward to it. So thank you. Well, I was looking forward to you coming to town, and then I get so busy, and I, and then I get to work. They go, you know, this is the day shooters coming, and it's like, <laughs> bam, there you are. Yeah, well, here we are. It was really nice to actually see you in person, man. Why do you say you might not do a lot of interviews anymore? Just sick of them? Yeah, you know, I, well, I get asked a lot of the same questions, and it's really been like pretty much anybody can pick up the phone and get a hold of me. And these days. I, the way that the world is turning and the way things are and the way that I feel about things, I really feel like it's important to say things when people are going to listen. And I think that uh, in a case like this, you know, we can talk about real issues, things that bother us without worrying about what people think, you know, and, and I don't want to deal with some uh, angled press somewhere that, that really wants to talk to me, you know, just ask me what it's like being my dad's kid or something like that and, and not really care about what I got to say about things, you know what I mean? What is it about the so-called mainstream media? I think it's their training. They almost always twist what was really said. I had Billy Corrigan on about a month ago, and it was in a bunch of newspapers. But one Salon article uh, actually did a decent job on what the interview was about. All the others distorted it. And I said, wow, I can't believe they actually just really covered what we said. They always try to distort on purpose like it's a, uh, impressive or something. I know. They, they, they spin it in a way. Uh, and I think this tr trickles down on a lot of levels. I think you have people at high levels that are they're strategically changing what they want articles to be angled against. And then I think you have people at low levels that just aren't paying attention and they only pay attention to, the, to what these things that, that strike a chord in their mind. And those are usually people that aren't aware of what's really Exactly. Going. No, it's a feedback loop. They've grown up in the propaganda. Yeah. They're not even active agents. They just regurgitate. Exactly. And that's the only thing they know. It's so funny because like people that aren't exposed to, uh, you know, for me doing Black Ribbons, that was an experience in me waking up and being aware. Like I can't even watch my children's children. And that was the last album, Black yes, Ribbons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that for me was trying to wake other people up, you know, but I can't watch, uh, uh, you know, bubble guppies or these shows that my kids watch on television without seeing something that is, is, is gearing them already towards what they're supposed to think the world is like, you know. Well, it's actively trying to take them away from you. I mean, I mean, you watch children's programming now. It's programming. I mean, it's yeah. straight it's, up. Yeah, with, with, the, with the exception of certain things that are independently done, I feel like exactly. You know that that we're in, in just like the news, just like sports programming. I mean, all of it. You're constantly being fed uh, this this uh, box that they keep you in, and, and how you're supposed to view the world, and what success is, and what women, men's relationships are, and things like that. You know, I definitely think that the press and the people who are uneducated about it are the people that, that perpetuate it. And that's their, what they've got in their back pocket is they know that 90% of the world are uneducated on what's really going on, and they're going to continue to per perpetuate the lie, you know? You're absolutely right about that. Wow. Uh, we were talking during the break, and that was some pretty interesting stuff. You want to repeat what you were saying off air? Oh, wait, what was I saying? Uh, we were just talking about the whole Second Amendment thing. Oh, yeah, yeah You've got yeah. the legendary name Shooter. I mean, what's your take on all yeah, this? Well, see, I got real mad because right after, okay, first of all, I have five-year-old daughters, so, so the Newtown thing was, was heartbreaking um, to hear. And, you know, of course, that I would never uh, want to say that, that those kind of things should be allowed to happen or whatever, because that's the way they like to attack you if you're trying to protect the guns thing. But I was listening, I was taking my, my five-year-old daughter to school every morning, and every morning I would tune in to your program um, on the way there and on the way back. And it was all the, the weeks leading up and months leading up to Newtown. It was like you had a soldier who was on anonymously who had said that they had been training him on, on taking away the weapons. And, and, and you were saying right then, all we need is one thing everyone was saying. Everyone, it's, it's easy and logical if you know what's going on, that all they need is one event that's going to pull on the heartstrings of America and allow them to, to make everyone want to give up their guns. Now, I'm not saying that, that I think that Obama directly had the children in Newtown shot. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, however it led to this event, that event is the event in which has caused everyone to start giving up their weapons. Now, I had an advertisement. For, I have a radio show I do on Sirius XM. An outlaw country every Saturday. No, I've heard it, yeah. Yeah, and so I had an ad for my Christmas show. And it was after all this, and, and I like I do my own graphic art and stuff, and I do things that are just crazy and funny. I, I took Santa Claus and put my head on some kid who's sitting on Santa Claus. And just to art it up, I always put blood splatters and little things everywhere to, around my name and everything. It wasn't like directly related to Santa Claus and the children. I just had this blood splatter thing as a kind of background coloring of the thing. And uh, just because that's what I do. And I had so many people get so angry about me posting this. And it made me mad because because it was after Newtown or whatever. And I said, it, why do we have to freaking sanitize our culture every time one of these things happen? You know, Rage Against the Machine, their entire catalog was banned from the radio. And Tom Morello is a friend of mine. And, and, and people have different opinions of 
of what he says, but I really strongly believe in his in his outlook on things. And they ban their entire catalog from the radio after 9-11 for several months. And it's like, what are you doing? Well, same thing with the Dixie Chicks when they criticize the war. And, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, for people that are on the left, he's one of the best people out there. He'll actually truly criticize. He's been critical of Obama. But, yes. but, but expanding on that... That's what the Soviets would do, is they're putting the guilt on all shooters, yeah. shooter, yeah. Uh, no pun intended, uh, so that we'll do what they say when the FBI's own numbers show 49% drop in violent crime uh, in the last 20 years because of gun proliferation. Yeah. The predators are absolutely scared, but then they want to say, oh, a child can't have a bubble gun. A child can't have a water gun. Oh, you're kicked out of school. You talked about playing cowboys and Indians or cops and robbers. This is the Sovietization of our country. Exactly, and it's like, the, you know, them going into movies after 9-11 and removing the, the Twin Towers. Like, like what, what happened to Never Forget? They want you to not remember, you know. It's the memory <laughs> hold. Yeah, and it just... Or take Taking trailers out from movies that show shoot 'em ups. Yeah. Oh my God. Or not showing movies. Or what was that one movie uh, that you know about the phone booth? I think it was called or something. All that stuff happens. It's like, what are you doing? It's like that's not the the problem. Why are we spending money and time and all these? But everyone has a bleeding heart thing about them, and they like to jump on that bandwagon, whether it's it's towards the right cause or not the right cause or whatever. But when well, they sure, they make it easy and, and and kind of a fake sentimentality. Just just kind of easy. Get on the bandwagon. Feel good about yourself. Yeah. Come on, turn your guns in. While the government's buying billions of rounds of ammo, uh, giant armored vehicles, and I have the army manuals training to confiscate our guns. It's yeah. like they're getting all these guns going, now turn yours in. We'll be real nice once this happens. Of course. I mean, it's two plus two equals four. I mean, of it's. Of course. They can kiss my ass as far as I'm concerned with all that. It makes me so angry. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Oh, my goodness. Man, let me tell you. I, I don't. Pimp is an overused word, but that <laughs> new album, this piece of vinyl, uh, uh, that'll drive Howard Stern crazy. Uh, this, th you know, he's these arguments with Papa Bowie about piece of vinyl versus a record. But let me tell you, I that is an amazing record cover right there, and you designed that, huh? Uh, well, actually, a guy named Keith Neltner did the artwork on this one. Who, who was an amazing art artist. We hey, is this guy here on the back here in the office? <laughs> That's me right there. We did we did a film that goes along with the movie that we're going to roll out later this year, and in that film. I was ended up getting shaved and all this stuff in a morgue, and this is all took place in the morgue. It all kind of ties into the film, but oh wow, wow! Look at that yeah, music video right there. Tell us the name of that. <laughs> oh, you got uh, that is the other life. That is the first uh, music video from the title track that is actually part of the film. This is the if you when someone watches the film, which is thirty five minutes long, this is actually the first three minutes of it. But it also has been served as a music video for us. Wow, we're going to talk about all that when we come back and give you his websites because there's several of them yeah. shooter jennings is our guest well that's a neat symbol right there yeah man that's that's the the death shield that uh that keith designed we'll be back that's a little bit of shooter jennings uh knew the other life and that's also the name of the album the last album that's amazing as well as black ribbons and it, it's so varied uh, i mean you know, some of it's outlaw country sounds some of it what would you call uh of uh, uh, the, the um the top track on Black Ribbons. I mean, you cover a bunch of different genres. What would you call it? Man, I, it's music, I guess. For me, I grew up an MTV kid, you know, so I, I was absorbed at all my dad's stuff, and I love country music, but I really fell in love with country music at a later point. I was a rock and roll kid growing up, so to me, it's not interesting if you don't bring it all in, you know what I mean? And I don't, But you do it all so well. Thank you, man. Well, genres are built just like they put you in a box in society. Is Genres are built to put music in boxes. What would you call Summer of Rage? I don't even know what to call that. Man, I don't know. It's like, it's like, like you said, it's kind of like soft rock, but it's kind of programmed drums, kind of Pink floyd -y. It's kind of, you know, this, that, and radio heady. I, exactly. I, I just... Yeah, I mean, soft rock's almost a terrible name, as you think of that as... I don't even know the word for yeah, it. I love me some Loggins and Messina, dude. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, but I mean, no, you can do it all. I mean, that's <laughs> that's the thing. Is some people can do one thing really well. I'm not kissing your ass. It's true. Thank you. It's just all good. I mean, there's not a bad track on Black Ribbons. Thank you. And I got to be honest, things always sneak up on me. This this album's been out a few weeks and going up the charts, and they've had it saying, hey, you know, come over and check this out. I've been so busy, I haven't even tuned into it yet, and what I've heard sounds amazing. Thank you. But tell us about the new album and the film that's coming out, and then we'll get more into politics in the next segment. Well, the new album, The Other Life, is kind of like a dark mirror to my last record, Family Man, but it's uh, I'm really proud of the record. Um, and then Blake Judd, who's a very good friend of mine from Lexington, Kentucky, he and I have worked on several videos. We shot uh, a 35-minute long film that we've just finished. We're going to be airing it at our shows. If you get a VIP package to our shows that we're doing, you can see an early screening of it, but we're going to be rolling it out throughout the year in different mediums. But it's a, it's a film, and dude, it's actually got... 
for what it is, it's got deep, deeply rooted ties in like the Book of Enoch and, and sacred ge ge uh, geometry and things about change and rebirth and all that. So, you know, it's it's pretty wild. I'm into you know, I get into all that stuff anyway. I'm, I'm into fighting the New World Order. I'm also into to, to reading every kind of religious... Well, you need to know about that stuff because they're obsessed with it, but use it for bad. Yeah, yeah, man. Absolutely. And, you know, everything from Dianetics to the Book of Enoch, I've read it all. I get into absorbing what what is what cultures are obsessed with religion and, and these kind of... Every angle. Yeah, every angle of it, you know. So, so it all kind of comes out. But I'm real proud of the record, uh, you know, and ShooterJennings.com is the place to kind of stay where you can find out where the film's going to be and, and all that. ShooterJennings.com. Yeah. You know, everybody's giving their kids names today, which I think is cool, like, you know, Rocker or, <laughs> or uh, you know, Shooter or Gunner. But, uh, but uh, one of my friends, you know, uh, sons is named, uh, you know, Rocker, and he is, he is a really cool kid. He can do backflips and stuff and, uh, on um on the wakeboards, but I mean, having the cool name Shooter uh, for a long time, that's cool. <laughs> As a little kid, it sucked, man, because it's real easy to turn that into something like Pooter or something when you're in school, you know. <laughs> I, like, I hate this name, but you know, but by about 20, I was like, yeah, it's pretty all right. <laughs> it's treated me good. Do now. the girls like it? The girls like it now. <laughs> they do. My, my son's name is Blackjack, so I'm waiting yeah. for him to get old enough to, <laughs> to, to you. Blackjack Jennings. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness! Yeah, man. You know, but it's it's cool, man. My real name is Waylon, but he nicknamed me Shooter from the day I was born. Yeah, I know, so yeah. I've always been called that, and cops call me Waylon. That's about it. <laughs> oh, uh, when they get the ID card, yeah, exactly. Huh? <laughs> Waylon Jennings. They're like really, they like to make an example out of me. That's been fun. They always do, though. They always. Do like sometimes to they don't know who you are, and they think Waylon Jennings. Who do you think you are, boy? Exactly. Or when they find out that I am, they're like, "Well, we're gonna definitely throw the book at him, and make an example out of him that he's not gonna get off of it because he's Waylon Jennings' son." You know, anytime I've been in trouble, they've usually tried to make an example out of me. Just, there's, there you go. That's the system for you. <laughs> And what's the point of that? I don't get how, like, the corrupt are supposed to always get off in the system, and then good guys, they go after them. Yeah. I guess they're good old boys, never doing no harm. Yeah. <laughs> Been in trouble with the laws since the day they were born. There you go. Exactly, man. You know, you know that kind of gets cheesy by the Dukes of Hazard, which is still a funny show, but when you actually listen to that song, that's a really good short country song. It is, man. You know, and, and he wrote it. The funny story about that is that he was, he was supposed to write the song and couldn't write it, couldn't write it, couldn't write it, and they were on their way to the screening for the, for the networks of the first episode of the film, and he wrote it in the bathroom room on the way that day and just coming up with something you know what i mean and it's funny that's like his biggest hit <laughs> you know so as a kid you know everybody watched dukes of hazard so it's easy to kind of be like yeah my dad did that song you know that's everyone knows that show <laughs> But it's actually kind of poetic, even though it's simple. Yeah, it you know, I'm just a good old boy. No, you know, my mama loves me. You yeah. know, it's like she don't understand. They keep a show on my hands, not my face on TV. You know, that's right. But anyways, we're gonna get more into your new record when we come back and talk about fearlessness. You were talking about that during the break and where you think society's going because what Black Ribbons came out two years ago. Two years ago, and I feel like it's more true now than it was then. It just it's amazing. It's not just evergreen. It's like a blossoming evergreen. Yeah, man. It's it's just everybody is so afraid of everything, and that's the way they. And the it. answer is get over. Over the fear. Yeah, yeah. You have to be fearless to be able to walk into the fire. You know what I mean. You have to be able to not be afraid to lose your life or your anything. And that's we'll be right back with Shooter Jennings straight ahead. Yeah. Monday through Friday from 11 a.m. until 2 p.m. Central, we're here live. Back weeknights, seven o'clock with Infowars Nightly News. It's now in its second year of beta. We have got cable networks, you name it, just begging us. Every day we got more uh, cable systems wanting to pick it up as soon as we syndicate it, which we're trying to get them. Reporters trained, the stuff in, the equipment, the new studio built. All thanks to your support. Uh, please become a PrisonPlanet.tv subscriber. 11 memberships for $5.95 a month. That's one membership can be used by 11 people with the same username passcode simultaneously. Operation Awaking the Sleeping Giant. Be sure and support us because I get so wound up. We're two and a half hours into this show and I haven't plugged anything on air. And that's really where radio is able to pay the bills as you're the host, plugging in and out of breaks, their own sponsors, their own stuff. And I got a stack of sponsors paid, ready to be plugged on air. I won't even do it. That's how obsessed I am with fighting the globalists. And thank God you've been buying the books, the videos, all the materials uh, off InfoWarsStore.com. Because believe me, you're loading bullets in the info cannon every time you go and buy T-shirts, bumper stickers, you name it. All pro-Second Amendment, pro-liberty, anti-GMO. It's not about left and right. It's about right and wrong. And you know what I love? He's not being politically correct. The Gunslinger Tour 2013 
kicks off right here in Central Texas tonight. And I'm just honored that Shooter's kicking it off in Central Texas. San Marcos. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> and uh, right here on our show. So I'm honored. And the album's uh, out now, climbing up the charts. The Other Life, the last big album. I say you need to get it as well. Uh, that's Black Ribbons. Uh, and, of course, we have some of that in the film, um, the uh, FEMA film that we put out, uh, The Rise of FEMA, as you now see, that's happening. And Shooter Jennings is here with us. Go to ShooterJennings.com uh, to get the album and to see the trailer for the new movie that they're premiering uh, at their uh, VIP showings uh, before, I guess, or after the concerts. And uh, I, I know a lot of your shows are sold out because about a year ago you were in town. And I'm, it, was, it was a couple of days before, and I heard about it, and it was sold out. Is tonight already sold out down in San Marcos? I don't, I don't think so, man. It's funny because, like, uh, I don't think most of the shows aren't sold out. Um, you know, which is your awesome one was a year ago or so when you were here. It may have been. It may have been. I think. I think that was when we were here with uh, Cody Canada and The Departed. Maybe I think that we were doing a little tour with them. That and when you're with Willie Nelson, you play with them too. A lot we of do sometimes. Yeah, man. You know, his son Lucas is really. I don't know if you've ever checked him out. He's real good, and his his album's called The Promise of the Real, and he's kind of in our mindset. You know. Yeah, I was talking to some of my friends that went and saw Willie recently, and they said his son was out there like him. and Smoking guitar, it man. sound just like him. It was amazing, the two together. Yeah, we're doing, hey, Lucas and I are doing a record together. We're about halfway done with it. And we're oh, wow. Together. So that's good. That's going to be a cool thing, too. And it's really more like an English rock sound, a southern-sounded English rock kind of rock. Dave Mustaine was here two weeks ago. I we, know that guy. I mean, I've never met him, but I've like seen his his all his, his talk. I love how he... he he says what he wants. Yeah, he says what he wants. No, it's just, it's just that we uh, ended up uh, hanging out with Willie son. That was, that was amazing. Willie Nelson, Dave Mustaine, and Megadeth. Now, now <laughs> getting back to what you were saying during the break, uh, I, I mean, where it's all going, getting out of this fear box. Yeah. Uh, we were talking about Obama. Uh, Get back yeah, into that. Man. Well, yeah, man. You know, you, I do believe that that at this day and age, you have to be fearless. That that moves on every level, musically, or what you make. Uh, I think what you say, all that kind of stuff. The fearlessness is the thing you have to have to make a change. Because they, the one thing that the government, the one thing that the the, the record labels, all these radio, they like to keep the fear of not being included is part of a big thing. They want to control the system, but we're close to breaking that. Yeah, it's like in music, uh, alternative media. Yeah, yeah, right, you're right. I mean, in the you know the boxes they keep us in you have to think outside of those boxes and like it's like with obama man i mean it's like i tell everybody it doesn't matter if it's obama or republican candidate at this point whoever makes it to the very furthest point to be be the two people you're choosing between both of those people two generations back go back to the same people controlling the people controlling the banks pulling the strings the people whose whose investments are being protected by whoever's going to be the president i had lots of people and they get mad at me all the time for saying this call me a conspiracy theory and crazy but you know that when Obama happened they were just like oh it's all going to change now he's going to fix it it's so nice it's so wonderful and yes and it, it is great for uh, uh the history of, of black america and the oppression and all those things that are happening but the reality get get rid of all those you know glistening facts that make it the whole experience so magical you look at the end of the day it's the same people that are pulling the strings and they're never going to have our interest and in somebody like ron paul if he was younger and all this stuff he would never get to that point they're never going to let that happen it's going to have to be somebody who's got an agenda on the inside to break the system who's not letting the outside people know about it to get into that. Wow, that's system. profound. You know, I've thought that a lot. E either we change things as a cultural revolution of liberty, person by person, that's the surest path. But yes, there are more and more people who are kind of halfway sold out who more and more are clicking. Yeah. It, it, it's not even so much that they've infiltrated as a liberty lover. It's that they're starting to get where this road leads, and they look in their children's eyes, just like you say in Summer of Rage. Thanks, man. It's true. It's true, man. And it's like we're in a we're in a place where the only way, and you know, David Icke said this, and it's something that I, and, and it was in a very small issue. He was talking about there something to do with the garbage cans in, in London, but spying on you with chips. Yeah, but yeah, but like saying that the the only way to get to to have success in fighting this kind of oppression is for everyone to bond uh, together in defiance. Like to say, we're not going to do what you're telling us. We, we exactly. No, I've said that. Stop complying yes. at every level. Yes, yeah, stop complying. You have to, you know, like it says in this, this summer rage, speak loud when they try to science, when they try to silence and withhold when they try to fight us. And that's the thing, you know, say so we're not going to fight you when you want us to fight you. And we're not going to be quiet when you want us to be quiet. I forget the Berkeley speech during the civil rights movement, but the man says you got to put yourself against the machine yeah. and just say, look, I'm not going to stop until you stop. And, and that's it. Just They put out this image that we've all got to be heroes by ourselves and fix it all overnight and slay the dragon like King George. Instead, it's lots of little battles. We've got to just put our weight against the machine. And folks, if you can't put a lot of weight, that's fine. Put a little weight. Because I'm going to tell you, once you start putting a little weight, 
It feels so good to resist. Just you're gonna put all your weight. Yeah, I know, <laughs> and that's why the this, this small community mom and pop stores right now in this ec economic decline. It's so important to strengthen the small community because exactly because those corporations are starting to fail. They don't get the success they want. This goes. I'll go ten miles out of my way to go to a mom and pop, even if the food isn't as good. I agree. I agree because it's like if you can strengthen that that small community, that's how communities bond together. That's how revolutions happen. You know, and I and I really believe that. And it same goes for country radio. If you want to use it as, as a metaphor, for for country radio and the way it works, you have all this pop glistening. They stuff. tried to block your dad. Yeah. I mean, it keeps going back to that. It didn't it, work. The only way that that, that it the, backfired. The reason why it backfired is because they amassed a a real community of fans, just like a revolution, who they couldn't ignore anymore. It's like all of a sudden they're selling as many tickets and his records as the pop acts without the help of the machine. You're able to take over the machine, and they did. And that's and that's why outlaw country is so important. Anything. Yeah. When the government's a bunch of crooks. The patriots are going to be the outlaws. Exactly, exactly. And it's just like the founding Western, fathers were outlaws. That's what they called them. And it's like every Western movie you ever watch, there's the corrupt sheriff that oppresses the entire town, and the outlaws come into town, defeat the corrupt sheriff, and free the people. And that happens in every one of them. And it's, and it's kind of what, it's the exact same thing. Well, because that really happened thousands of times yes. in real history cases. Yeah, yeah, exactly. In the Wild West and everything. And it happened, uh, you know, with the American Revolution. It happened with, every, with everything. So. Well, and so many times you'd have a corrupt railroad boss. or I mean, you see those Clint Eastwood movies. Those are based on a lot of real cases that, I, that we've covered on air. With Pinkerton security would come in to muscle people. And finally, they'd kill some little girl or little boy. And one guy would stand up. And then usually he might get killed, but then everybody stood up. Yep. And see, that's what the system knows. They know that if they kill myself, Ron Paul, or somebody like that, and make it obvious, that, that, that it doesn't actually scare people when they see the Patriot get destroyed. It's like Obi-Wan Kenobi by Darth Vader. He lets him do it. Yeah. He looks over and, okay, I'm really going to beat you. Watch this. Yeah, and then the Jedis rise up, you know, and, that, and that's the truth, man. And that's why you have to be fearless and you have to, just like you do every day, no matter what people think about you, you're going to say what you think. And there's nobody who's going to, tell you off camera what to say or sway you in a direction. Have you had any trendies tell you not to call it the gunslinger to her? Uh, you know what's funny is that it hasn't happened because there's been more controversy over a couple bloggers and people thinking I was putting death threats out on them with, with, the, with the song Gunslinger before it, but I'm sure it'll hit us. But you know, the, the theme, the lyrics of that song are about being misunderstood. It says, don't, you know, don't call me an outlaw, I'm a gunslinger. It's like, it's a different, so I'm not I'm not. I'm not here to make a, a, a ruckus. I'm here to actually get a job done. You know what I mean? And that's kind of what I think. I'm standing up. I'm real. I'm not a slave. Yeah. I'm a gunslinger. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, you know. Well, well, expanding on that, that's a thing now in the culture in this weird nanny state. People use it to peck at somebody. Yeah. And and I know you've been very successful. Have you ever noticed that people manufacture now these cosmologies to then say someone is bad so they can produce a drama? Oh well, of course. I mean that that happens all the time. You look at the way that they, you know, I'm again. I don't. I never supported George Bush. I don't support Obama. But you look at the way that when George Bush was on his way out and the economy went down and they were. Able, the media was able to just be like, let's put all of the focus on how bad of a president George Bush was so that the new guy coming in is going to seem like yeah, no, no. an amazing thing. You're a theater guy. You see that. Yeah. They were wetting everyone's appetites. Yeah. The Bush people run the Obama people, so they dest destroy him to make the Savior look good yeah, yeah. so they would sell the whole agenda. I mean, it's all scripted. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, so, it's, it's, it's so beyond scripted, and, the, and it makes, makes me laugh. It's like that movie Wag the Dog we were talking about the other day, and Ryan and our tour manager goes, you actually think they do that? And I'm like, they do it. They, they did it a year later after it came out in Kosovo, the very same thing. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, it's the same thing, the little girl. Yeah, oh, we've got to invent. Shoe, the song Willie Nelson sings about the brown shoe. Oh, we got to come up with a song about a shoe that's going to make everybody's heartstrings about the fallen soldier, you know? And it's like, God bless the soldiers of America. Like, I'm, I'm but they, beyond behind Well, them. exactly. But while they're taking their guns and putting them in psychiatric facilities for no reason, they then use them to wrap their agenda while their internal documents say they hate the veterans. Exactly, man. Of course, man. And then finish your point about the veterans. I interrupted. Well, well, no, I'm just saying that I think that you know the veterans are, are the thing in this country that 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 are uh, on the front line and they're going to do the right thing always. By and, but I just feel bad for the fact that at the top of the chain there are people that are not looking out for them. Well, see, that's why the globalists love and hate the troops who want to go to all robots and drones, in their own words, so they'll fo you know, follow orders unquestioningly and engage in the war crimes. Yeah. They've got to try to find the psychos and promote them into black ops and CIA, but there aren't actually that many of them because people that really have courage most of the time 
uh, do it because of a guardian instinct, and they yes. and once they see the lie, they revolt. That's why every authoritarian tyranny, once it fully takes over, wipes out the good police and military. Yeah, that's why the police and military who don't know history need to understand if they fully take over, which they're really trying to do now. You're the first people they're coming after. Yeah, it just it's just I wish that that more. Um, you know, police and these things actually had full disclosure as to what was really going on. Because a lot of the time, it's just guys operating in the dark. You They're know, compartmentalized. Guys, yeah. And so like, you don't know how many soldiers come up to me at shows and, shows and tell me that, that, that my music and Hank Three's music and other people have really gotten them through hard times overseas. And that's beyond something I can even comprehend. Because here I am, you know, just I talk a lot, but I'm in the studio working in, in the safety of my own Orders and get to go home and be with my children and all this stuff. And they're over there fighting the front line for us and for our freedom. And so it's like, it breaks my heart to see so much corruption going on behind the, you know, closed doors. And Well, exactly. You can't take away the fact that they're in a horrible situation and most of them signed up believing it was good. Yeah. Even if they were conned and it's a lie, it doesn't make them bad. Who it makes bad is now it's been, de well, not declassified, WikiLeaks, they confirm it's real. Of course. Uh, that they have torture camps everywhere, but they use special contractors. The troops don't know. They deliver the families in trucks there with bags over their heads. And the tr I've talked to the troops. That's why they go back and commit suicide. When they see some pot-bellied pedophile at the army camp taking the little girl in, the guy doesn't know what to do and goes home and blows his head off. No, don't blow your head off. Go speak out against what they're doing in the black sites. Yeah. You see what I'm terrible. saying? It's terrible. I mean, it's, it's terrible conditions in a lot of cases. And then the worst thing that I see and I've heard about is just how they treat the veterans after they come back. It's just like after Vietnam, they come back and they're all, you know, they're strung out on drugs and there's these things and then they don't have a home and you got these terrible situations for veterans. And it's like now, you know, they've been in Afghanistan. I mean, there's the, the abundance of heroin, the abundance of all these kind of things going on over there. And, and it's just the things they see, the things they have to do. I just hope that they really, in the future, we have better treatment for veterans. Well, I mean, the people back in the cowardly empire, yeah. you know, out here, uh, they're scared of the troops when they come home because they're scared of men. Yeah. They're scared of, they're scared of people they shouldn't be scared of. And, and, and and then they're not scared of the government who they should be concerned about. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And they, and they, but they don't know. A lot of people don't know what's going on. You know, this interview, we got about 15 minutes left here with you, Shooter. And we're going to go do an interview for the Nightly News. But then I'll dole that out in there sometime next week. Uh, ShooterJennings.com. After you leave here, what is it that you want to talk about that you forgot to talk about? But let's get in the time machine and come back to right now. Man, that's hard to even say. My mind gets going so fast. Same here, yeah. But it's, you know, I, I'm, just, I'm just happy to, to be here and with you and talk about these kind of things because it does weigh on me, man. It's like I, I look at my kids growing up in this world and I look at what things are going to be and, and it, it scares me. I, I, it scares me that anybody just doesn't listen and doesn't open their mind to these things, you know, and it's musically, I, people don't open their mind to music, people don't know, there's a whole wave of underground country artists that don't get any exposure because radio's gatekeepers keep them out. Oh, they put horrible f fluff I can't listen to. Oh, it's terrible. E even the so-called old-fashioned country stations air all this new stuff. Yeah, and then they have, they have uh, uh, whatever you call, um, you know, just like in government, they have patsies that they set up. They have artists they set up as their kind of outlaw country artists that they're trying to appease that appetite for but yet are still just part of the, the organization just puppets you know and it's just like everything operates on such a level that it could be a same metaphor for uh, uh, the government you know but ultimately just talking about uh, uh, all this stuff and just just being able to have the freedom of speech to do it is what I enjoy doing being on here so what do you think is going to happen as the economy implodes as they rob the bank accounts in Europe uh, Cyprus and other places, if they really try to keep pushing and, and, and name libertarians, constitutionalists, conspiracy theorists, and say we're bad. I mean, that's a throwaway line. I don't want to hear culturally what you're saying that's totally pertinent. You're just a theorist because you don't trust known liars. I mean, I'm worried about civil war in this country. I, I am too, because you look at with the, the treaty or with, with the deal that they're signing down here against Obamacare, a lot of the, the people turning against that. I, I don't like to see everybody uh, so disjointed. I'd rather see two sides to be honest with you then I would like to see all these different things but I think that 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 what happens is, is the right side tends to get too caught up in in uh uh, some of the religious aspects and, and the abortion aspects and all those things, the, and the gay aspect, the gay marriage and all that, I, they really, even the, the weed thing, like what I really would prefer to happen, and I believe that all of that stuff, I th I, I'm a person who does believe that each individual has a choice to do whatever they want to do, but I also think that a lot of those, those 
things are what's keeping progression on both the left and the right. Sure, the system uses it as a diversion football issue, not meaning people don't have points on the issues on both sides. The issue is, is it's used to distract from all the other uh, why are we giving $85 billion a month to foreign banks? And then no one even knows that. I know, I know. And, and yeah, and I agree. It's a distraction. So I hate to see all that happen. I just, you know, I would love to see someone stand up as a public figure that would actually have the interest of people in mind that can really relate to the youth as well as, as the older generation. You know, I think we're going to need something like that. I think it'll happen. I honestly am a big supporter of even this anonymous. You, do you follow anonymous in the, in, in the, the college rape trial thing that was happening with them? There was like the football team. That, yes. Raped all the and anonymous went through and revealed all this stuff and exposed the corrupt sheriff and the and how the sheriff and the school were talking. To well, look at WikiLeaks. I, I, I've thought that's too good to be true, but now it's releasing that Kissinger's a known criminal, that they're torturing kids. Yeah. I mean, I don't think they're releasing that on purpose. No. No wonder they've been torturing Manning. Yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe that's terrible. By the way, that the Manning situation, the the, the hacker just now that died and uh, that committed suicide in New York over all the pressure that was down on him when he'd done a lot of good things. Yeah, I mean, sure, there, there there's things. That that they were well, they're now going after whistleblowers. Stay there. Shooter Jennings is our guest. Amazing interview. ShooterJennings.com. We're back live with Shooter Jennings, ladies and gentlemen, and um, we're going to be doing the nightly news tonight. I don't know if I'm going to air the interview tonight. We do with him. I may dole it out next week with PrisonPlanet.tv viewers. But, um, wow, the new album is out. The other life, Shooter Jennings, certainly an iconoclast. Uh, a smart guy, very interesting. And, and check this out. Check out if you're a TV viewer. Uh, they've got uh, the new record uh, out on vinyl, and it is purple. I mean, uh, the uh, <laughs> the TV camera cannot pick up how rich that is. Man, that is that is cool. Yeah, man, <laughs> it's always um, the presentation is just as important to me as the. You know, when I was a kid, I used to listen to records. This is another way they've ruined everything because we have everyone downloads records. But as a kid, I used to buy CDs and sit in my room and listen to it and just look at all the art and look at all the imagery and and kind of tie it all together. You know, and and that seems like a very lost art. I like the know. black shield. It's, I mean, uh, the heraldry in it. It's very strong. Striking. Yeah, it was kind of like a family crest design was the idea behind it. And yeah, that's what I am. You know, the last record we did a variation of it. From this for this record, we uh, we have uh, uh, that being the the kind of central logo for the record, and I think it kind of a lot of things tie in. That's that. a powerful. See, you hadn't even told me it was a crest, but that's what I got from it. Yeah, like Keith Neltner, that artist man, he's got great vision, and, and working with a guy like that is is really a, a, a pleasure. What, what is the idea here? Like like the. the well, What's the symbology? You know, a lot of the record is has been my journey and kind of, uh, kind of really understanding being myself without with fearlessness. You know, dealing with fearlessness. I mean, dealing with with what I I feel uh, I'm expected to give to the Wayland fans. What I feel like I'm expected to give to my fans. What I feel like I'm all that. And I think a lot of the record in this film we made, one part of it is I my hair gets cut and I get shaved and it's like kind of like. What's underneath all that a little bit is the real me, you know, as opposed to what, what people think that I'm supposed to be or the perception of me. And I think it's coming to terms with the fact that not everybody's going to like me, but I got to put forth what is me, you know, by speaking my mind and doing what I want to do, regardless of what anybody else wow. is going to think. Even the Wayland fans, even as much as I love my dad and he was a great dad and I'm proud of it. I have to step out of that and say, you know, the very first line of the album that happens, it says, do you know who you are? And that actually was as small of a piece as that is, was written during uh, Black Ribbons, and it's really about, and, and this is what I encourage with any artist that asks me what they should do as an artist and all that, is, is be yourself, you know? No, expanding on that, uh, expanding on that, you are absolutely right, and if you're not real and true to yourself, and if you don't even try to discover who you really are, you will just take on the programming. Exactly. So really you're saying be conscious, really live, be a human, don't be a dumbed down animal. I mean, I, I, I Good or bad, it doesn't matter. You can't always make the right decision in life, but you have to own every decision you make and, 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 and you, you can't, I've learned this the hard way. I've learned it by, by being dishonest with people. I've learned it by being untrue to myself, making decisions that weren't true to myself and then paying for that later. And, and people know it when you're not putting something real out there. And I think when it, if you put something real out there and it strikes a chord with someone, that's when it matters. Well, more and more, I've, I've known this for decades, but now it, it consumes my life. And, and, and I didn't even know about the new record. You know, I mean, I knew you were coming and I'm just focusing on it now because everybody gets caught up and busy. Sure. But, but everything in my life is accelerating. And I think it's happening to other people as well in a quickening towards 
I only want to be around people that are real, even if I don't agree with them or completely like some of what exactly. they do. I'm sick of fakeness and lies and, and BS, man. Yeah, I agree. And it's like, I don't have a problem, you know, these pop country artists. I don't have a problem with their personal journey. Don't say there's anything wrong with it. But the thing I have a problem with is insincerity. And, and the music that's put out there in the, to the masses is insincere. The news that is put out there to the masses is controlled and insincere. The, the mo most of what you receive on your daily programming from advertisement to, to, to subway stations versus... It's cold. Blooded manipulation. It is. It is. You're right. <laughs> you know. Oh, I mean, I have a buddy that had some uh, hit country songs, and he got so tired of being fake and putting out the pop they wanted that he quit. Yeah. And, and I mean, he was making a lot of money and successful. And he said that. He said everything. Who they say you like, what you do, everything is scripted. I'm not going to be fake. We'll be right back. Infowars.com. <laughs> Again, great job to the crew out there. They are kicking butt. Uh, uh, we have the best radio crew slash TV we've ever had. Best crew on TV and. I just am so thankful for my crew and all you, the supporters and listeners and the good Lord above. We were just talking about synchronicity, serendipity uh, during the break and how, uh, not attacking atheists, but they say, we're just on a rock. It's all boring. We don't have free will. We're on a rock in deep space. What is this? We were talking about, I have dreams that come true. You have dreams that come true. I mean, yeah, let's yeah. talk about that. What is this? There's definitely major stuff going on we don't see. Oh, I big time. I mean, I've, I've done all kinds of research into religion, the occult, all, everything like that. And I do believe... Uh, I do believe that are there elements at play. I do believe that there's God. I do believe that there's a, or at least a force that is beyond our comprehension in which in which everything has. I just don't. I do believe in the science aspect of it, and I also believe in spiritual, like the importance of being spiritual. Whether or not there's a God, whether or not there's like a, a dude in the in the you know in the clouds or whatever, I think it's important for you to figure out a balance in understanding. Sure. Well, they uh, set science up against religion, and the foolish people then are argue it back and forth as a football issue. Yeah. But I mean, they're coming out with huge math equations and spectrometers and things, and they're finding there's some other force containing and focusing things. Yeah, and whether that be like the, the scientific theory that there's a, there's like a web and a net that everyone is connected uh, in some kind of uh, visible or non-visible form, dark matter, those ideas. Yeah, that's it. Something as simple as is just believing in, in, in doing good. Do you know what I mean? It's like it all, it all kind of ties into this, into a very very easy concept which is living and acting truthfully and accordingly just a good old boy never doing no harm <laughs> yeah, I, I, no harm yeah well, well i mean absolutely it comes down to i have goodwill people say well what do you stand for goodwill yeah now if somebody crosses me screws me around i can be just as vicious as the most evil guy out there but i won't even do it in an evil way i'm saying it's that I don't like doing people wrong. I just don't get people that think they're getting ahead doing that. Yeah, and people that are able to do that are people that have come from a situation. Those are the kind of people you have to be really scared of, you know? People who can sit there and lie to you and know that they're doing harm to you. They're all around, you know what I mean? And, and I'm just not that way. I'm just not of that nature. You know, I'm sure I've made mistakes and sure I've told lies to people because I didn't want to upset them. And sure, when you're younger, you go, the point is as you develop, I mean, obviously, you you choose a side. Yeah, you do. You do. And and unfortunately, there are a lot of people out there who who have chosen the the wrong side of that. You know, and that's why you have that's what everyone is fighting against. And it's unbelievable what people have done. There are people that have done things to people that people would die just even hearing what they've done. You know, the kind of audacities and war crimes and things in government, even even people's lives and their livelihood being taken away over bets. I mean, even if you look at the, the Mitt Romney KB, uh, KB Toys thing, the thing with that company, how they shut down KB Toys yeah. as, as like a thing. It was like a mom and pop organization, you know, all that stuff. Uh, I feel, you, again, we get back to that, but the small community. It's funny, I was saying this between one of the breaks. When I watch 90s television, I grew up in the 90s and 80s, and, and really like I watch shows like Beavis and Butthead and Seinfeld and all that, I mourn at, for the innocence that we had as a culture back then because things were so much better and now there's so much more heaviness after 9-11 and terrorism and the wars and, that we have and i'm sure that that generation felt the same way about the 70s or 70s felt the same but way this the is years. the end of the innocence really yeah and, and now people are getting so decadent they go let's be evil because it's cool and it's like hey you know evil isn't the image of the devil cheerleader man evil is like burnout cities and poverty yeah man i watched that movie god bless america the other day have you seen that thing no oh whew, it's it's all over the place but there was a there's a speech in that movie it's so important he's like we're living in a culture where it's celebrated you know uh every the nastiest worst most violent thing is celebrated as normal in the culture with, with youtube kids are on youtube doing videos you know this is the culture we're in that celebrates the bad it, it, to the point where oh yeah it's cool to be mean to animals it's cool 
cool to say kill all the Arabs. Uh, all the shows are about psychos that right. torture anything people. Anything that's shocking, anything that's shocking is what's funny now. It's it's like the more shocking it is, the funnier. And then when it really happens to you, nobody cares because it's funny. Yeah, it's desensitized to the point of you know. So I, it's I, done by design. The album available for download on iTunes right now. The other life, Shooter Jennings. Available right now at ShooterJennings.com. I'm Alex Jones. We'll be on the news tonight, 7 o'clock.